I call to order the uh, special session of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, April 11th, at, uh, 2023, at 6.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Vatikiotis? Here. Vice Mayor Lund? Here. Commissioner Carr? Here. Commissioner Eisner? Here. Commissioner Kouyas? Here. Okay. This evening's um, invocation for this special session will be given by Reverend Christi Christina Spall of the Unitarian Universalist Church. If we may all stand and, and stay standing after uh, Reverend Spaud is done, we'll have the presentation of colors, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the National Anthem. Spirit of life and love, spirit of justice and mercy, known by many names, among them God. We are gathered this evening to do and witness to the work of making a community, of running a community, of building a community, of stewarding a community. We give thanks for the work done by our commissioners, vice mayor, mayor, manager, and all the elected and appointed officials serving this community where we live and work and play. May you be grounded in values of both civics and faith, however you might define that, to include those who might be called the least, the lost, and the last, for all are our neighbors and siblings. May you be mindful to provide resources to those with few, if any, means, to ensure care is available for all in need of it, to remember those who cannot vote, the homeless, the children, the earth, the creatures, as they too are your constituents. May you be reminded to continue to ask questions from a place of holy curiosity. May you continue to be granted the wisdom and courage to support this community as it grows and changes. May you remember that you are held by and accountable to the community whose care you are entrusted with and who trusts you to act justly. Spirit of life and love, spirit of justice and mercy, I ask that you offer your presence to these leaders and servants tonight and always that their minds may be stilled and their hearts opened to the work before them this and every day. This we pray in the name of all that is good and right and true. Okay, if we please remain standing. If I may have the order of the presentation of colors, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will now have the national anthems um, sung by Ms. Felicia Fowler. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming, whose sparse stripes and bright stars through the pale. Oh, let's 
fight all the perils we watch were so gallantly streaming That our flag was still there. Oh, set us that star-spangled banner yet Oh, the land. Absolutely beautiful. We have the order to retire colors. We may stay, take our seats, please. <coughs> um, before we go uh, ahead with the agenda items, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, a couple of dignitaries that are, are with us this evening. Mayor, can you pull your microphone down? Mm -hmm. They can't hear you. Thank you. Before we uh, proceed, um, I'd like to introduce a couple of dignitaries that are here with us this evening. We've got former Mayor Tom Koulianis. Tom, if you want to raise your hand, there you are. Um, he is the brother of uh, newly elected Commissioner John Koulianis. Um, former Mayor Anita Protos is right in the back. We have former Commissioner John Terrapani up in the corner and Commissioner Townsend Terrapani also up in the corner. There he is, okay. And also I'd like to um, introduce uh, Commissioner Jared Buckman of Oldsmar. He's with us this evening. Um, we have the, uh, Mr. Ryan Portelbaum, the president of Advent Health Hospital, and Ms. Jane Huggenville, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, Tarpon Springs Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for all for being here. Um, Commissioner Carr, if you'd like to join me out front. a couple of uh, presentations and gifts for Commissioner Carr. I'm going to read this plaque that um, he's going to be given this evening in recognition and appreciation of dedicated and devoted service as City Commissioner 2017, 2018, 2019, 2022, and 2023, and as Vice Mayor 2020 and 2021. Uh, City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, and the board that he served with was um, in addition to Mayor Alahousis and Townsend Tirapani, and um, I, I'd have to remember who the other ones were. We have <laughs> Vice Mayor Lott, uh, Commissioner Mike Eisner, and of course, uh, Commissioner Kulias. So congratulations. Great. Thank you.
thank you for your many years of service and everything else that goes with it. And I know it's a tough job, we all do, and uh, wish you many years of success with whatever you're going to be doing in the future. Thank you. We've got a couple of other items for you. Um, okay. Just so you don't forget what time of day it is. <laughs> and the fact that you're a sponger, wow. like most of us. That's so, awesome. Yeah, and it's got your name wow. on it. I don't, I don't forget my name either. Right. <laughs> And then Great. here's a pair of cufflinks also, Jacob, that if you have a shirt that uses them, I don't, but I put them in the buttonholes just to remind me that I'm a sponger. So, Great. thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> but would, would the family like to come forward so we can get photographs of, of Jacob and the family together? And then um, Commissioner Carr is going to go return to his seat and then make his uh, outgoing remarks. I also want to mission, mention Vice Mayor uh, Lund is part of this process, but he doesn't have anything that he gets this evening. <laughs> um, he'll, he'll get sworn in at the next uh, meeting. And um, I know Commissioner Carr's got a few things he'd like to say. And also after his comments, we'll go to the commission and then we'll go to public comments. And if anyone from the public uh, wishes to come up and say a few words uh, for Commissioner Carr. Yeah, as the mayor knows, I am not short for words. Um, I'm sure I've given him a few gray hairs as well uh, for all the words I have to say <laughs> over the past six years. Um, right here, I've got Paxton with me. He uh, is my three-year-old son. Um, he wants to be with daddy tonight, so it's an honor to be up here with you all. Um, to the residents uh, who have supported me through the two elections and the two terms, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to my wife and family. Uh, who supported me during my term. This hasn't been just uh, about me and serving the city. It's been a sacrifice as a whole family. Uh, it really takes a lot from a time. Let me be quiet. Okay. <laughs> it was a huge time commitment. Um, I had a couple friends who convinced me that it was a good idea and, can, and told me there wouldn't be that much time uh, to do that. And with that, they pretty much lied to me. Um, but I accepted that, and it's been an honor, uh, like I said. Uh, so a, a couple things about me. I grew up in Tarpon Springs, going to elementary through high school in Tarpon Springs. Uh, both my parents uh, are living the, the American dream. They both have small businesses here in Tarpon Springs. Uh, my sisters both, um, I have two younger sisters who grew up with me as well too. Uh, when I was first elected, it was my wife and our golden retriever. Uh, now we have two beautiful young children, Amelia and Paxton, who we uh, adore and love. Recently, my daughter was asked uh, at school to fill out a questionnaire. And uh, one of the questions was, what does your dad do for work? And her response was, he goes to City Hall and eats pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just love the perspective of children. Um, and one of the things that a lot of people ask me, why, why do you do this? Why did you get involved with politics? And um, while working with my dad uh, growing up and throughout college and after college, we would discuss certain things driving the, driving the job sites. We would talk about sports. We would talk about the weather sometimes. Sometimes we would point out things and be like, why did they do that? That makes no sense. What were they thinking? So he told me, you know what? You can make a difference. Get involved, and that's what I did. I got involved. I was on a historic preservation board. I was on a planning and zoning board for a total of seven years combined. And then I was elected in two separate elections as city commissioner and appointed as vice mayor for two years. It's been an honor to serve with many, past, many great past board members. What is, was it easy? The quick answer is no. Um, one of the toughest parts on voting on items is you upset somebody on one side and you make the other side happy. But at the end of the day, I know I voted for what's best for Tarpon Springs based on the code and the ordinances in place. Hey, baby. You want to say hi? Yeah. Okay, say hi. Hi. Okay, good job. <laughs> 
This past year has been especially difficult working with the board. To be clear, there's no room for bullying, and this never should be tolerated. I've been lied about. I've had my character and integrity challenged by a small group of individuals, but I kept showing up and doing my job no matter how much mud was slung. During my, la during my six years of service, there's a few things that stuck out, and I just want to cover a couple of those things. State, county, and federal funding. Uh, the city of Tarpon Springs has received almost $5 million in state funding over the past four to five years. That's something we really should all celebrate. When the city gets funding from the state and county levels, it allows the city then to take the, the dollars that are collected from the local residents and put them towards other projects and move those projects forward. That's something that the board should be really proud about. Um, the dredging funding, and also the current board worked with Bill Arrakis on another $2 million from the federal government in 2023. Um, <clears throat> a few additional items would be the miles of missing sidewalks that we've added as a board um, to improve the safety for our children and pedestrians that walk throughout our cities. Uh, working with the county, some of you may not know, it's easy to say this road is bad, why aren't you fixing it? But it's not the city's road, and it's a county or state road. So the city has to work with the county and the state to repave these roads. Working with the county to actually move those roads up to be paved sooner is a, a, really, a really big accomplishment as well, too. Uh, beautification from gateway signs to flowers on Pinellas Avenue, historic street signs, wayfinding signs, the clock at the top of the bayou, historic building signs and historic markers. Um, seeing the Land Preservation Fund having more money dedicated and added to it um, in the past four years since inception. Recreation improvements of our baseball fields, softball fields, expansion of the soccer fields, replacement of our old rusty fences with coated metal fences at Riverside, Dorset, and Sisler fields, and multiple improvements at Sunset Beach. Supported multiple public safety in initiatives with new equipment for the police and fire departments and the staffing needs. Supported extension of the hospital lease to ensure that we had a, a quality long-term tenant with Advent Health. <clears throat> there are many, many more things that I will not list tonight, uh, but we really couldn't do this without a dedicated help of our staff. I've witnessed the department heads and many staff members put in an extremely amount of hard work over the years, and I want to thank them and their commitment to the city. Without a great staff, we couldn't do what we do as a city commission. There are a few things I hope the city addresses sooner than later um, as I'm exiting. One would be replacement of many miles of old metal pipes, finding ways to lower the millage rate, allocate funds to the Land Preservation Fund annually, see Highland Park improvements, bayou dredging, and improve stormwater filtering to help prevent pollution going into the waterways. With this chapter coming to an end, I am grateful for the opportunity and excited it has truly been an honor to serve the residents of Tarpon Springs, and I thank you all. I would um, also like to add to that uh, uh, Commissioner Carr's accomplishments is surviving COVID yeah. and taking the city through COVID for at least two years. If you remember right, we were televising our meetings. We weren't sure what the procedure was going to be the next day. The governor was getting involved with the emergency orders and and we had to just gut it out and, and Commissioner Carr was a part of that and, and helped everybody as he should with the commissioner going through that. So thank you for that. And again, um, uh, you know, I'm former city manager and, and now commissioner and mayor. Um, I don't need to, you, you know how hard it is, and, and I know how hard it is to go through this, and sometimes there's a lot of bumps in the road, and um, sometimes things don't seem fair, but you just have to keep your head down, and um, like our former um, uh, high school principal, at Tarpon High, used to tell us every Monday morning after a loss of a football game, um, you know, our heads are bloodied but unbowed. Um, that's from a poem uh, that he used to recite, Invictus. And so I always remember that this is Tarpon High. This is the high school I went to school. So again, thank you, Jacob. <clears throat> this is your night. And um, I want to thank his family for all the support that they've done. I know with my wife, like you, I'm sure it's pretty hard sometimes. So you hear about it. Jacob hears about it when he gets home, I'm sure. So, all right. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, are any other comments, uh, Vice Mayor Lunt? Um, Commissioner Angela? 
Did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, I do actually. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank Jacob for his service. Um, no, it hasn't always been easy, but overall, it's been pretty good. Um, you're a little more verbose than me, but I think we have a lot of the same objectives in mind for this city, <laughs> and uh, I hope I can carry on for you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Eisner. Thank you, Mayor. I also want to thank you um, for your I contribution. I know just how hard it is. We don't always see eye to eye. I want to wish you the best of luck in your future, and I want to thank you for what you've done for the city, and I hope to be able to uh, do the same coming up. Thank you. Thanks. Commissioner Krios. <clears throat> Commissioner Carr, I just want to thank you for your service. Uh, we go back just from going to school throughout all the different um, grades growing up. And, and as first, when I first got involved, I didn't see eye to eye with you. Uh, you did have a very difficult year. There were times where, uh, you know, it was a collective effort to make a point. There was times where there was individuals who were constantly um, trying to make that effort and give you a hard time. But you stood tall, you stood strong. Uh, you know, you took, you made your opinions and you, you voted according to your heart, which you thought was the best for Tarpon Springs. And uh, there was actually times, and I'm sure the mayor can agree with me, when we had some big applications come across the board. And, uh, you know, the rest of us really didn't have a, a way to put a motion in with current conditions that were gonna be applied. And we relied on you and your wisdom to be able to do that. So uh, I just wanna say that thank you for your service and uh, I'm not sure if I, I garnered a friendship, but I hope I've earned your respect as you've earned mine. And I have this little gift certificate mm -hmm. from Rusty <laughs> Bellies. That way you can <laughs> Thank you. a nice meal and uh, just you. appreciate your service, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go to public comments now. If there's anyone from the public, the family, uh, any anybody from the public w wishes to say a few words uh, about uh, Commissioner Carr? Tom Culianos, 1250 South Pinellas Avenue, Tarpon Springs. Uh, prior to the meeting, I checked with the mayor and he approved my making comments for both agendas at the same time, so I don't have to get up twice. So mayor, commissioners, Chief Scott, Chief Young, City Clerk Jacobs, City Manager LaCours, family members, former elected officials, friends and guests. First, I want to thank Commissioner Carr for his years of service to our city. I really did not know Jacob until late in 2022 when I began attending commission meetings again after a 35 year hiatus. Although I did not agree with Commissioner Carr on some issues, I learned to respect him as he was always prepared and had a grasp of the issues. It is not easy being employed full time, being a husband and a father, and still being totally prepared for each meeting. <laughs> Commissioner Jacob Carr, thank you. Thank you. And I hope to see you. to see you sitting at that dais again in the near future. Thank you. It would be an honor to vote for you. Commissioner Lunt, congratulations on serving another term on the board. You have done a fine job as vice mayor, and I personally hope you are selected to continue serving as vice mayor for another year. And now my final comments are from my baby brother. He is about to be sworn in as a city commissioner. I assure you he will do a great job and I know his heart is in the right place. I am very proud of you, I love you, and I know mom and dad are looking down on us tonight with great pride. Thank you. Jacob, I had you as a student, ninth or 10th grade, you were a quiet child. Never, <laughs> ever would I expect what I see today. Uh, I love the fact that you came in with a smile every single day. You worked hard. And when you didn't achieve something you wanted to work to, ad to achieve it, and the sunshine that you would bring in when you would come 
in this in the classroom, sit down, minded your own business. I knew there were a lot of thoughts going on in that head, but you kept quiet and you kept to your task. And I really believe that success often lies in keeping at it, keeping at it and just moving toward that direction. And I'm very happy to be here tonight and congratulate you. Thank you. Good evening, Anita Protus, 901 Bay Shore Drive, Commissioner. <laughs> Tarpon Springs. Jacob, it has been an honor to have you represent Tarpon Springs. I'm just sorry your children will not be riding their bicycles on the bayou and meeting me for dinner sometimes. <laughs> Jacob used to always wait for me with a smile on his bicycle to go to the happy to eat. And I'd say, are you hungry? Yeah, real hungry. And sometimes we got a second dinner. And his mother said, don't feed him so much. He doesn't eat at home. I said, that's all right. Always polite, impeccable manners as a young child. Jacob, you are truly a representative to the people of Tarpon Springs. You helped a lot of people. You always returned calls. I've heard all good things about you this week. We're sorry you're leaving, but we hope you come back. And hold your head high because you went through some rough spots up here with ugliness that you didn't deserve. And I want you to know that the citizens of Tarpon know that you didn't deserve it and they're not gonna forget it. Thank you, you've got a beautiful family, God bless you, and we hope to see you back again. Thank you. John Koulianis, 1020 Peninsula Avenue. Uh, I'm neighbors with Jacob. Jacob, um, brings his family down my street and um, and I've always I always enjoy with Carrie and Paxson and Amelia and seeing them and and you're just a, uh, a I can just tell you're a wonderful father he is isn't he yeah <laughs> I can tell you're a wonderful father you're a gentleman and I think above all that's how I would describe you you're always kind um, respectful and um, I'm proud to call you my friend. Thank you. So, but you know, about a week ago, he came by with his with the kids, and I made my car dance, and the kids had fun. And um, but Jacob started telling me about um, some uh, state event that he went to with some elected officials, and he said that he was trying to solicit um, some funding for Tarpon Springs. And it's just like days before he's gonna leave office and the guy's still working to try to get money to, this, to the city of Tarpon Springs. And then he tells me, like, John, you need to do this because we can get this money and you need to talk to this guy and that guy. <laughs> and you know, I would end up getting the credit if I did what he told me to do, but he didn't care. That's, that's selfless service. And um, thank you. Bravo. Vasily Fackless, 929 Oakview Road. Um, <clears throat> Jacob, I also want to thank you for your service. Um, Jacob's uh, neighbors with uh, my, my parents, now my mom, and uh, he always uh, looks after my mom and uh, lets me know what's going on there. So I want to thank you and your family. Um, and um, I also want to thank you for always coming and asking. That's that's the beauty. It's the family, the kids. <laughs> Keep it up, Paxson. <laughs> um, but I just I just want to thank you for coming as a as a small business owner um, here in Tarpon, coming and asking me my opinion on things and how things are going to affect my business and other businesses, and. Um, whether we always agreed or dis didn't agree, you know, you, you listened. And that's what's the most important thing is you listened and you stood up for the downtown property owners and the business owners. When we came to you to ask and we have questions and concerns that affect our livelihoods, 
that means a lot. So I just want to thank you, and God bless you and, with your, and your family. Thank you. Good evening, Forte Coolianis, 1185 South Pinellas Avenue. Uh, Jacob, since our time together as students at Tarpon Springs High School, I've always known you to be a, uh, a God-fearing, respectful, kind, and uh, honest man with a servant's heart, and uh, I've always appreciated that about you. While we might not always see eye to eye on certain things, you have always led with integrity, and that's something this town should appreciate. Uh, during your time as commissioner, you helped to accomplish many wonderful things for the town that we both love. Um, not once did I ever hear that you went around town spreading rumors about people, harassing people, gathering dirt on people you perceived as political enemies. And even when you were unfairly attacked for evacuating your family during a hurricane, you held your head high, as well as the other times you were unfairly attacked. For that, I appreciate you and all the other service that you've done for this town, and I look forward to uh, many years in this town together in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Maria Serantis, 1201 North Florida Avenue. My mother, my daughter, and I are blessed to have Jacob and Carrie and Paxton and Amelia as our neighbors. There is nothing more comforting than looking outside and knowing that they're across the street. All of the comments that have been said are true. I can attest to that. They are always willing to help. We're three women alone in the house. Jacob is always helping us. He took me for mulch, put a pallet in his trunk, in his truck. And it's, it's always very selfless, very genuine. And Hey, Paxton. <laughs> I, um, I really, it's, it's a great blessing that we've gotten a chance to know you all, and I thank you for your service. I didn't realize all of the work that goes in doing what you do, but we thank you and we love you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Melina Makris Fos, 124 Tarpon Avenue, Ambiance Hair Salon. I got to know Jacob over a couple years now, being his stylist. I got to see Carrie pregnant with baby one and baby two. Now they're toddlers, and how old is Amelia? Four and, oh wow, okay, yeah, time has flown. I wanna thank you for always taking the downtown Tarpon Springs District into consideration, always. If you weren't sitting in the chair and I didn't spark up conversation as to what's going on, I wouldn't know what was going on. So I thank you for your years of service and hopefully in the future we get to elect you again. I'm Debbie Gustafson. I live at uh, 642 Kenneth Way. And just to be perfectly clear, I'm Jacob's mother-in-law, <laughs> his favorite mother-in-law. <laughs> I um, am so proud of Jacob. He is a man of honor and integrity. He's a loving husband and father. And he has been an absolute wonderful son-in-law to me, especially since we lost um, my husband and my daughter's father four years ago. And he loves this city. And I've, I am so proud of all of the work that he has done the last six years. And I, John, I want to say congratulations to you and Kay for your new granddaughter. And I um, hope, I wish, you luck the next three years, and I do hope you'll be treated with more respect than Jacob has been afforded this last year. And I want you to know I'll be praying for you. So thank you for allowing me this time. I am a truly, truly blessed lady for having my children and my grandchildren and my son-in-law. And it's been a privilege for the last almost two and a half years to live in Tarpon. Carrie Carr, 1204 North Florida Avenue. 
I hit it, I hit it for all that. <laughs> so as Jacob's wife, I just wanted to stand up here and say a few things. It's been a long six years, but I want to start by thanking you for your service to the city of Tarpon Springs. Since I first met Jacob almost 11 years ago, he has always had a heart for local politics, and he greatly cares for the town of Tarpon Springs that he has called home since he was two years old. As his wife, who besides God, there's not many people who can say know him better, I know that it has truly been an honor for him to serve the city and the residents for the past six years consecutively. I have watched him take the job seriously with integrity, compassion, and foresight. As the spouse, I have consistently seen him work long hours, stay up late, study, and make difficult decisions with the betterment of Tarpon and its residents always in mind. I know Jacob to have a strong moral compass, a great work ethic, and again, truly a heart for Tarpon Springs. I want to end with telling you, Jacob, that I'm proud of you. You have been able to endure a lot while serving these past six years. Over these six years, we've sold and moved homes. You lost both grandmothers. You lost a father-in-law. You became a dad twice, which meant having a pregnant wife for 18 months. Um, you've truly juggled a lot, and you've done so with a lot of grace. God sees it all, and we know that through these trials and testing that what's produced as perseverance. Thank you, Jacob, for your sacrifice and for your help to keep Tarpon a great place to call home. Are there any other public comments from anyone here? Hi, I'm Nancy Robinson. My address, uh, 12, 420. 11 mile road, Soresco, Michigan. And I'm his aunt. And I've enjoyed his company very much this last winter as I retired. But he's done a fabulous job and I'm very proud of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. These, these are uh, public comments for Commissioner Carr. Is there anyone else that would like to say anything? Okay. Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? Speak on this item. Please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, and Ms. Jacobs, we have no, we do have one, that we do have one, that's right. This is from Lisa Benitez, 733 North Florida Avenue. Honorable Mayor Costa Vaticiotis, I would like to express my gratitude to Commissioner Jacob Carr for his service to Tarpon Springs. He served on a, under an unnecessarily challenging atmosphere and yet remained dedicated to his service. Although there were times I disagree with the decision, I always knew that Commissioner Carr had done his homework and had the best interests of the people in mind. I've observed that he is a decent, honest, and thoughtful man. These qualities serve him well as our city commissioner. May God continue to bless you, Commissioner Carr. Okay, we're gonna end public comments uh, concerning Commissioner Carr, and we have a little um, un done, uncomplete business that we need to finish up on. We have the uh, resolution 2023-14 for the ratification of the election results uh, Mr. Salzman, if you could read the resolution by title, please. Resolution 2023-14, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, ratifying and confirming the results of the municipal election held on March 14, 2023, and providing for an effective date hereof. Okay. Um, are there any commission comments? Congratulations to the elected. Okay. Congratulations. Um, are there any public comments on this item? Mr. Jump, are there any uh, remote access comments? If anyone would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand. You'll be allowed him to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and we do not have any raised hands at this time. Poppy. 
Uh, yeah. Commissioner Carr, if you'd like to make your last motion. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, motion to approve resolution 2023-14. Second. Any further comments, roll call, please. Commissioner Kouyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. <coughs> yes. Okay, we're going to go on to public comments. Are there any public comments that are that were not on the agenda this evening. We have a, a second um, meeting right after this for public comments as well. So, okay. Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments on anything not on the agenda? If anyone online would like to speak, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, that ends public comments. I'm going to go to board and staff comments. Um, are there any, um, Chief Young, anything? Uh, Commissioner Carr, I just want to thank you on behalf of the men and women of the police department for your uh, steadfast uh, support of our department. Uh, as a resident of the city, thank you for everything you've done over this past six years to make this city better. And as a friend, person to person, and your fam knowing your family, uh, congratulations for uh, enduring and making it through, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Mr. Salzman. Commissioner, it's a short time working with you. I enjoyed it, and uh, I hope the best for you and your family. God bless. Thank you. Okay. City Manager LaCourse. Just congratulations on your six years, and uh, good luck on everything you do. Thank you. Ms. Jacobs. I too would like to thank you, Commissioner Carr, on behalf of the clerk's office. It's been a pleasure to work with you and for you for the last six years, and I wish you the best in the future. Thank you so much. Are there any commission comments? I, I, do, I do want to reiterate that, uh, and I didn't know if I had mentioned it before, but uh, through some of my, my actions towards you, I do wish to uh, give you an apology for some of them, and just moving forward, I wish you the best in raising your family, your professional career, and. Uh, Looking forward to giving you some calls for some outside Please. advice. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, and thank you all for the kind words tonight. It really means a lot. It's been an honor to serve. And I'm really excited. I'm gonna be home yes. before 12 o'clock in the morning yeah. uh, tonight, and there's gonna be no more late Tuesday nights for me uh, moving yeah. forward. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Um, before we move to adjournment, uh, this particular type of meeting that we have where we have an outgoing commissioner or commissioners um, is often, often referred to as sine die. And to me, it, it's a Latin term. And to me, that's always, um, it's kind of a sad term because it's a somber term because it means it's the end. It's the end of a journey, the end of an assembly. And tonight, it's a sine die for this particular commission and for Commissioner Carr. And it also means that there's no future date. And what that means is that when we adjourn here, it ends and then we start a new commission and then it's up to Commissioner Carr to make a decision of what he wants to do in the future, whether he comes back or anything. So to me, it's a closing of all the work that this commission, especially Commissioner Carr, has done over the six years. That chapter closes, and a new chapter should open up for him at some point if he chooses to. So I just wanted to let everybody know that's what sine die means, and to me it's a special term that um, it's a very somber and a special occasion to have that um, for any commission. So I'd like to adjourn the meeting, sine die. <laughs>
we're going to do is, uh, even though we don't have all the uh, commissioners back here, we're going to go ahead and proceed with the oath of office. And I'm going to call um, our city clerk, Irene Jacobs, forward for that honor. If I could have uh, Vice right, Mayor nice. Lunt and his family come forward. Hi, John. Irene, was that mic on? Can you hear me now? Barely. Barely. I'll try to. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor Lund. <laughs> if I can have you raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. Say your name. Craig Lunt. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? Or affirm? And affirm. That I will support? That I will support. Protect and uphold? Protect and uphold. The Constitution of the United States? The Constitution of the United States. And of the State of Florida? And of the State of Florida. And the Charter and Laws? And the Charter of Laws. Of the City of Tarpon Springs? Of the City of Tarpon Springs. That I am duly qualified? That I am duly qualified. To hold the office? To hold the office. Of Commissioner Seat 2? Of Commissioner Seat 2. That I will faithfully perform? That I will faithfully perform the duties, the duties of that office, of that office on which I am now about to enter. On which I am now about to enter. We'll, we'll have comments, and uh, once both are sworn in, and then um, if you'd like to return to your seat, unless you want some photographs taken. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Commissioner Koulianis. If I can have Commissioner Elect Koulianis and his family come forward. You ready? You can't change your mind now. <laughs> Okay. Other side. Or? If you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I. I. Say your name. John Kulianis. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear? Or affirm? Or affirm that I will support? That I will support. Protect and uphold. Protect and uphold the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And of the State of Florida. And of the State of Florida. And the Charter and Laws. And the Charter and Laws. Of the City of Tarpon Springs. And the City of Tarpon Springs. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. To hold the office. To hold the office. Of Commissioner Seat One. Of Commissioner Seat One. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully perform the duties. Perform the duties of that office. Of that office. On which I am now about to enter. Of which I am now about to enter. Thank Ms. Jacobs, you ready? Okay. I call to order the regular session of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023 at 7.23 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Vatikiotis? Here. Vice Mayor Lund? Here. Commissioner Eisner? Here. Commissioner Kouyas? Here. Commissioner Koulianis? <laughs> Here, that's gonna happen. <laughs> No, I said here to Commissioner Julias. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not me this time. <laughs> All right. Um, this evening we have the invocation by Reverend Milton Smith, chaplain of the Tarpon Springs Police and Fire. If we can all stand for the invocation, please. Let us pray. 
Dear Lord, we come to you on this special day and at this special time, a moment that we are blessed in this city by our city commission. Today, as the new city commissioner, Commissioner John Colanis, and Vice Mayor Lunt has taken the oath of office, we are blessed, we actually bless them as they make decisions for the benefit of this city, its staff, residents, and visitors. We ask that you would bless this entire city commission, our mayor and, and, and the other commissioners, the city manager, and all those who work to make Tarpon Springs a better place to live. We ask that you be with our first responders and city workers, city manager, and just all those that even that are on the streets working to beautify the city, to make it a safe place. We thank you for allowing us to be here this night to witness this great occasion. We ask this in your awesome and blessed name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, if we can be seated again, please. What we're going to have now is a special presentation, um, and usually it's just the paraphernalia that is given to the commissioners to equip themselves, to identify themselves in the public as commissioners. Um, Commissioner Lunt, you already have yours, so there's nothing for you this evening. Um, Commissioner Koulianis, if you can come forward. First and foremost is the um, key to the city of Tarpon Springs. So congratulations, John. <laughs> Something for your tie. Thank with you. With the seal of the city on it. Thank you very much. Um, we usually have pocket protectors for pins, but uh, <laughs> just joking. Uh, we have the city <laughs> seal for your pocket if you ever need that. Thanks. <clears throat> also, a lapel pin with the city seal and a little um, tarpon springs just to remind you where we are in the state of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, what's very important, um, commissioners get uh, T-shirts and polos, whatever they need with the city seal and their position and their name on it. And um, also, um, we get these magnetic badges that are very helpful in going to various locations, meetings, uh, restaurants, oh, only if it's on business. So, uh, John, here you go. You're all set, ready to go. Congratulations, Thanks. Thanks, and we're looking forward to it. If either of the commissioners uh, would like to say anything, Vice Mayor Lunt. John, you just signed your site for away for another three years. Um, <laughs> welcome. Thank it's, you. Uh, we've talked a lot as you were as you were considering running, as you were running, and as you ended up running and opposed. Um, I think we share a lot of the things going forward. So I'm really pleased you're on board. I very much look forward to working with you. Likewise, thank you. Okay. Commissioner Koulianis, your first official words, your presentation that you'd like to make. Okay. Mayor, you know I'm not short on words. That's okay. Okay. Hey, hey just one minute, please. What I'd like to do is have a motion and a second to relax our rules of procedure so we don't begin with the resolutions at 7.30. May I have a motion and a second, please? Motion to relax. Second. Okay, uh, roll call. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes, I, I take it you weren't gonna be done in one minute. 
So go ahead. Oh. <laughs> You're going to put the four-minute timer on me? No. No. Thank you, Mayor. It means a lot. Uh, you and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, you got me in this. So <laughs> anything I do, it's your fault. Well, don't say that publicly. So, <laughs> but uh, I, anyways, I, uh, I'm proud to serve with you guys. Kalo Pascha, belated happy Easter to those non-Orthodox Christians, belated happy Passover to our Jewish friends. Thank you to the mayor, commissioners, vice mayor, city manager Lacouris, city attorney Salzman and Kardash, <coughs> police chief Young, fire chief Young, chaplain Smith, all the department heads, and our wonderful city clerk, Irene Jacobs, and her city clerk deputy, Michelle Manousas. And also all my friends from the PNZ that are up here, I'm very happy you attended. Thank you to um, all, all our friends and family for taking the time to attend tonight's ceremony. Special thanks to my amazing wife and daughters, uh, Kay, Joanna, and Eleni, and my son-in-laws, Mike and Nick. I also can't forget the best campaign treasurer ever, my brother and former mayor, Tom Koulianis. I just have one question for Tom. What, what are we going to do with these? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and the newest member of our clan is Paulina K. Pappas. She is 12 days old today. I didn't know exactly what to say tonight, but while looking at my granddaughter, I started thinking about who she was, who she is, and what her future would be like growing up in the town of so many of her relatives, past and present. This little sweet girl has a seriously deep Tarpon Springs bloodline. Paulina's great-great-grandfather, George Michael Koulianis, immigrated from Kalimos, Greece, and was estimated to have work, been working the waters of this area as far back as 1895. He owned as many as up to five sponging boats working up and down the west coast of Florida. He married a natural Greek beauty named Eleni Tiliakis, my daughter's namesake. And they initially had three children. My father, Michael George Koulianis, born in 1915 on Spruce Street in Greektown, along with her younger children, Mary and Dino. Sadly, Eleni died in 1920, giving birth to her youngest child, Theophanes. Uh, my father's oldest memories at five years old were of the horse and wagon that carried his mother down the dirt road of Tarpon Avenue out to Cycadia Cemetery, where both his parents, George and Eleni Kolianis, are buried today. Paulina's great-grandfather, Michael, along with his baby brother and sister, were sent to Kalinos to be raised by their relatives. The kids grew up in terrible poverty in Kalinos until my father, Michael, was able to get back to America in 1935 at age 20. His brother and sister were able to get back to America a few years later. However, the baby, Theophanes, was given up for adoption and eventually migrated to California where he had a large family of five children, many grand and great grandchildren. My father, Michael George, told me many stories about those early years in Tarpon Springs. It wasn't easy at all. It was during the Great Depression a time where immigrants weren't especially welcomed in this area. The Ku Klux Klan was active in these parts as well. I even remember as a kid seeing the Saturday evening cross burnings that took place just off US 19 and Alderman Road in Palm Harbor that went on well into the 1960s. Blacks and Greeks had to be especially careful venturing off outside of town at night my friend Charles Samarcus's great uncle was burnt to death for merely flirting with the constable's daughter up in Steenahatchee. 
I eat breakfast a few days a week at the Bayou Cafe, which used to be the Tarpon Theater. Blacks weren't allowed to sit on the main floor and had to enter from the rear door and sit in the balcony. There was a standing water fountain for white people on Tarpon Avenue and a water spigot a couple feet off the sidewalk for blacks. These were truly tough times. Michael George went on to volunteer for World War II and participated in the invasion of Normandy where he was wounded after advancing into France. He was the recipient of a Purple Heart and a Bronze Star for Valor. When he returned to Tarpon after the war in 1945, there was very little work. He was hired, he was hired at a U.S. Steel recruiting station that was uh, on Tarpon Avenue. It's the same recruiting station uh, where he enlisted for the war just a few years earlier. He and my mother, Anna, uh, took their family up to Gary, Indiana, where I was born in 1954. He went to college to become an accountant on the GI Bill. Paulina's great-great-grandfather, Louis Papamikolopoulos, arrived in America in 1904 from Sparta, Greece. During World War I, he served in France as an army chef for General John Blackjack Pershing. And it was there that he is known to have created the Louis Pappas Greek salad. So when you are eating your next Greek salad, please think of little Paulina K. Pappas and her great-great-grandfather, Louis. He and his wife, Flora, established the first Pappas restaurant on the sponge docks in 1925. To this day, Pappas Greek salad and Pappas restaurant might rival Tarpon Springs as being more widely known throughout this country. His sons, Luke, Jackie, and oldest son, Michael, eventually opened three Pappas restaurants in Tarpon, St. Pete, and Tampa, respectively. Paulina's great-grandfather, Michael, known to all as Big Mike, was understood to be the leader of the group of the three brothers. The, food, the fruits of his philanthropy are enjoyed every day in Tarpon Springs. His donations to helping build the St. Nicholas Greek Community Center, the existence of the Ahepa Building, and many more projects and programs throughout our community are a testament to his kindness and generosity. Paulina's great-great-grandfather, John Cortesis, my wife's grandfather, held an important role in the early days of the sponge exchange. The sponge exchange was, an, a, com was a commodity exchange in some small ways, like those of the famous commodity exchanges in Chicago and Philadelphia. The sponge values were maintained based on a, a supply and demand market forces. John Cortesis was the chief accountant and finance director for the exchange who recorded and helped in, a, in the establishment of those prices at auction. He purchased property on Athens Street and built a home where my wife's mother, Joe Cortesis, still lives to this day. Joe Cortesis, my daughter Joanna's namesake, Paulina's great-grandmother, was a beauty as well. She was homecoming queen at Tarpon Springs High School in 1952, where she caught the eye of Manuel Cortesis. They were married shortly after graduation and lived together on Athens Street until his passing in 2020. Manuel retired from a long career as an engineer for the Florida Department of Transportation. Joe, Joe Cortez's father and mother, Everett and Zelma White, migrated from Ohio in the 1920s. They were special people as well. Besides being a jeweler and owning White's Jewelers on Pinellas Avenue, they also ran the Tarpon Springs Airport, which was located where Howard Park is today. He played the saxophone and performed with some of the big traveling swing bands of that time, including the Glenn Miller Band. Both Everett and Zelma were pilots. They and their best friends, Abraham and Margaret Terrapani, flew all over the Southeast in, in those days, including trips to Cuba, an unlikely friendship between a Yankee Methodist and a Lithuanian immigrant Jew. 
Paulina's other grandmother, Paula Pappas, and her family immigrated to the States from Italy. She met her husband, Paulina's other grandfather, Michael, while attending Florida State University. Paula's father was a professor at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Paula raised her only child, Michael III, my son-in-law, in the Catholic Church. She passed away from cancer <coughs> when her son was in his early 20s. Paulina's other grandmother, Kay, my wife, is known to our family as Kitty. She is the cat lady of Tarpon Springs. And Thelma, you know it. <laughs> I know some of you all think you are animal lovers. Seriously, you all are amateurs. She and my daughter Joanna have saved so many stray cats, dogs, birds, that I can't even begin to count. Ask Dr. J at Enclote Animal Hospital about Kitty K. We had cats everywhere, in our house, in our office, outside the house, outside the office. But I laid down the law. I said, no more cats. She still sneaks them in. <laughs> she and my daughter had two cats living in our guest bathroom for over a month before I stumbled across them. <laughs> oh, well, my, my dog Nico and I commiserate each, with each other and have learned to love them all. Paulina's great-great-uncle, John Cortezes Jr., retrieved, he retrieved the cross in, 1950, in 1942. He was the first of 16 family members of the Coulianus Pappas Cortezes descent to receive that honor, with the latest being her cousin George Stamus in 2023. Maybe, who knows, with a little more progress, Paulina might <laughs> join that club someday. Speaking of progress, Tarpon Springs has made a lot of it from those tough times of yesteryear. Remember, my grandmother died giving birth in her home. Today, we have a state-of-the-art hospital, Advent Health, in our town. It would not have happened. My father had to go up north for work and to use his GI Bill. We have a four-year college on Klosterman Road a child can grow up to be a doctor, lawyer, CPA, engineer, nurse, and any other profession you can think of within driving distance of Tarpon Springs. My daughter, Eleni, was able to become a registered nurse and eventually a nurse practitioner without having to leave our community. There's also no sign of the Klan. Mayor David Archie and Commissioner Glenn Davis being elected to the Board of Commissioners is a testament to the progress we've made as a community. My grandmother was carried by wagon down the dirt road of Tarpon Avenue. Today we have conveniently paved and maintained roads and streets. We have beautiful parks and recreational facilities for our kids. We have great elementary, middle, and high school, both public and charter. We have restaurants, we have stores, we have clean water and great services. And we're protected by our wonderful police, firefighters, and paramedics. So let me sum it up by saying that to me, Paulina K. Pappas, our 12-day-old granddaughter, is a great representative of the people of Tarpon Springs. She's a Greek, an Italian, an Orthodox Christian, a Catholic, a Methodist, an immigrant, a migrated Yankee, and a whole lot more. She is a Tarponite in this quintessential American town we all call home. I was with my father when, we made our, when he made his first trip back to Kalimnos, Greece, after 30 years. He never wanted to go back because he had such terrible memories. And we, when we were on the boat going from Kos to Kalinos, we could see the mountains and we could see the beautiful port and the, be and the blue water. So I asked my dad, I said, do you feel like you're home? And without any hesitation, he said, nope, Tarpon Springs is my home. 
uh, this is our family story. How I, however, I don't care if your family has been here 100 years or 10 years. We all enjoy this wonderful town, and our children and our grandchildren will create their own history. We honor our ancestors by preserving our heritage, but more importantly, we must make wise decisions that preserve what's special about our town for future Tarponites to live even better lives than we have. I look forward to working with this board to do just that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me ask the uh, commission whether you have any comments. Uh, Vice Mayor Lunt, did you have anything else um, to add? Or? I actually do have some comments. I uh, wanted to welcome John previously, but I also uh, think it's about time I thank my wife for putting up with me for the last year. <laughs> um, we've been in Tarpon Springs for about 11 years now and really uh, <laughs> enjoy living here. Um, and anyway, that's all I wanted to say was uh, thank my wife for putting up with me. She's been a great sounding board. Um, I love her to death. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. It was very funny, John. You, uh, when you were running for office, you said, can I sit next to Mike Eisner? And here you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting next to Mike Eisner, and it's a all pleasure right. to have you That's here. That's all right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank and congratulations you. on your newborn. Thank I you appreciate so much. That. Thank you. And your <laughs> grandchild as well. Thank you. Commissioner Quillianis. <clears throat> Commissioner Quillianis, I, I don't know where to begin. I've known you all my life ever since growing up with your daughter, just throughout, you know, uh, middle school and high school. Uh, you've um, been a great guy and inspiration. There's a reason why uh, you ran unopposed. The people of Tarpon Springs believe in you to make good decisions. They know you're a formidable person who's gonna speak with your heart, think with your mind on the, on the future well-being of this city, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to thank John for staying with it and getting himself elected unopposed and doing all the right things. Um, it's true, John and I are friends. We've been friends for a very, very long time. We both want what's best for Tarpon Springs. That's without question. And we all have the same vision, the, the warmth of Tarpon, everything that he spelled out this evening. Um, we also... Um, have had our differences as well and and um, we don't always agree how which path you take to get to that point and so I want to make it clear to everybody even though that John and I have been very good friends he's very independent he tells me what he thinks you know in his own way <laughs> which is sometimes I'm not accustomed to but but that's okay um, this is a tough job that we're in we're going to hear it from um, everywhere and um, and to do your job right um, you, you hope to have more friends at the end of your term than you did starting out um, I know with city manager that wasn't true I had fewer friends um, and with that and and as uh, mayor I'm not sure the jury's still out on that and I think with John he's just starting his um, his career as a commissioner and I wish him all the luck in the world and um, John, I, I know we're going to have some pretty lively discussions up here, but it's all going to be for the best of Tarpon Springs. So welcome aboard, and we look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, City Manager, of course, do you have anything? 
Well, I would say I look forward to working with him, but since the election he, and he ran, uh, he got elected unopposed, he's been seeing us and staff and visiting us for the last two months and stuff, so he's already got the <laughs> biggest head start of any commissioner working with us because he's here finding out about everything and uh, he's ready to hit the ground going tomorrow. And I do have your key card upstairs Thank to you. personally give you, and I'll give that to you because I know you've been asking for that since December, but <laughs> now I can officially give it to you. Wonderful. And look forward to the rest of the time looking for you and look forward. We've had a, That's better than all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we've had a good year working with uh, Vice Mayor Lunt and look forward to continuing that. But, but welcome aboard and we're ready to get to work. Mr. Jacobs, do you have anything? I too would like to congratulate uh, Vice Mayor Lunt on his uh, uh, unopposed uh, winning and also welcome aboard uh, Commissioner Koulianis. Um I look forward to continuing to work with both of them and now I'm happy that you're getting your key cards so I won't have to let you in the building every day <laughs> legally. <laughs> uh, Mr. Salzman, do you have anything? Vice Mayor, of course, I look forward to continuing to work with you. Uh, Commissioner, it's been, we've talked a few times and I'm looking forward to that. And Likewise. Of course, anytime you need me, I'm here to answer any questions you have or Regina. So we hope to uh, make sure that uh, this term is very smooth for you. Thank you. Chief, you're up here. Uh, Vice Mayor and, and com Commissioner, no, no longer have to call you Commissioner elect. I've been right. doing that right. enough now, huh? But I uh, look forward to working with both of you again, respect both of you immensely. So thank you. Um, I had forgotten Vice Mayor Lunt. I just wanted to, uh, Vice Mayor Lunt uh, took my seat when I decided to run for mayor. I ended my three-year term one year early and Vice Mayor Lunt stepped up and uh, went for one seat, which was a big sacrifice, a lot of work to get one year. And I'm just glad he decided to try and make it another three. And I'm very happy that the, the residents of Tarpon Springs saw fit that he did such a nice job as the one-year term that he came back in unopposed as well. So welcome aboard again. Thank you. All right. We're going to go to uh, um, public comments now um, on anything including um, the new terms of uh, Vice Mayor Lunt and also Commissioner Koulianis. Michael Cuscuta, 623 East Tarpon Avenue. I've known John for a long, long time. Um, I don't know if I remember you from Gary, but <laughs> it, it seems like Gary and Tarpon Springs, there was a path between Gary, Tarpon Springs, Youngstown, Ohio, Tarpon Springs. And you were very eloquent in what you said because there's dozens of stories like your parents and grandparents that, that came here to Tarpon Springs. And um, so it's important that you follow and it goes for it. And, and this is not a claiming conspiracy that you got two claimants sitting on sitting on the commission, <laughs> but but that you follow and, and, and embrace that the, the heritage and the traditions and, and what makes Tarpon unique that you follow that. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, Commissioner Carr said before he departed was he remembers when he was young going with his father and his father would make the comment with regard to decisions made at City Hall, what were they thinking? I say that all the time and I said, I'll say that, I may end up saying it to you, John. Sure. I've said it to every commissioner, every mayor since I can remember. And 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 I, I say that in, 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 in because you gotta think like me, I'm just kidding. Um, but but the, the, what I'm trying to say is this. If your heart is in the right place in any decisions that you do, and it's for the best interest of this community, and as much as sometimes we may disagree, I understand. And, you know, friends are always friends. And that goes for everybody sitting on the board. I've known most of you a long, long time, including our wonderful, uh, Jeff Young, who have known him since he was a little kid. Um, and, and, and those are the things that make this community a, a wonderful community to live in. I left Harpin. I know everybody here left Harpin. And, and again, congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your service.
Fort Dequilinus, 1185 South Pinellas Avenue. Vice Mayor Lunt, congratulations on another term. As your former political opponent, couldn't be more proud of you. Just don't forget you offered my girls and I a ride on your boat, so <laughs> I haven't forgotten about that. <laughs> Commissioner. <laughs> um, very proud of you. I, congratulations on this uh, achievement. It's gonna be a long three years, probably the longest marathon you've ever run. It's gonna make the New York one look like a cakewalk. <laughs> The only thing I ask you is um, in all the decisions you make over the next three years that you not only keep your granddaughter in mind, but you keep my three daughters and their future in this city in mind. And also um, my papa, your father, uh, just try to keep the, the things he would have done in mind because he was the most honorable person I've ever known. We spent a lot of time together in his final days and I know he's watching over. He's probably pissed off at you for, for doing this, <laughs> but uh, I know he's proud of you as well. So please, just stay the course and do what we put you here to do. Thanks, Forti. Anita Protos, 901 Bayshore Drive, Tarford <laughs> Springs, Florida, former commissioner and mayor. John, I'm very proud of you tonight. You are a breath of fresh air for the citizens of Tarpon. All, everybody's talking how excited that you're up here because they know that you're gonna make decisions based on what's good for Tarpon Springs and our families. I like what you read about your family. We all have history here. And I started thinking, look at Townsend Terrapani, a commissioner, his father was on the board, what his grandfather did and his father. Look at some of the others, Panayotis Papu, who was a great captain in Greece and who he worked for as a captain. He doesn't say anything, but his grandfather has a lot of history as an outstanding boat captain, even next to Onassis. People don't know this because they don't brag about it. This tonight showed that Greek people are not dirt, as past times a commissioner made a remark to me. I went to a lawyer and he says, don't fight it. It's his word against yours. But we're proud people. We have history. We have lineage in Tarpon Springs. Your wife Kay's grandmother was one of the best bakers down in Greektown. We waited for her pastries. And her grandfather, I still have the ring Papu gave me when I was 16, the watch when I graduated from White's Jewelry Store. I remember my grandfather working in the sponge exchange. I remember on the Greek community, when George Tarakas hit him over the head with a, ch a chair and they had to take him to Tarpon Springs Hospital. But it was George Tarakas, another Greek man who was a mayor on this board who brought St. Pete College here, a great Rotarian. We were all proud people, we've all worked together and we know that you're going to be a proud commissioner, you're gonna work hard for the people of Tarpon Springs, you're not gonna listen to others, you're gonna do what you think is right. And I want to say thank you for giving your time to Tarpon Springs, giving your time from your family for us, and it's gonna be hard. But we're not dumb as bricks, as been said a couple of weeks ago, and we're not trash, we're proud people. Your grandma, your mother is looking down in her fine suit, mm -hmm. her jewelry, her makeup, <laughs> her a beautiful lady, and she's very proud of you tonight. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> George Kulianis, 624 Boehner Drive. Uh, I did not expect to come up and speak tonight, but uh, I first off want to offer my congratulations to Vice Mayor Lunt. Uh, congratulations on your reelection. Um, if you're offering boat rides to everyone here, you know, I'd like to sign up as well. Um, Commissioner Kulianis, also known as my Uncle John, um, <laughs> to be here tonight and see you be sworn in is a pretty special moment. Um, I know in the past that we've not agreed on everything and you've had some hard to hard conversation with me and um, I've always spoken your mind to me, but um, I really appreciate that about you. And uh, you know, I think you're gonna do a very good job here. I know that you always have put Tarpon Springs first and put the people of Tarpon <coughs> Springs first. And uh, you know, whatever past things that we ever had debate and talked about, you know, the most important thing is we're family. And um, I love you, I, I pray for you all the time. And uh, again, I know you're gonna do a great job. And uh, one of, when I was running for office, one of the things I always thought about, or one person I always thought about was Papa Michael. 
and just what he stood for and the kind of man he was. And I know he instilled that in you and it has gone throughout our entire family. So again, I, I'm so proud to be here and I, I, anything I can ever do for you, please just, I want you to know that I would love to help you in any way. So God bless you and I do love you. Thank you, George, I love you, love you too. Vasily Facklis, 139 East Tarpon Avenue, and congratulations, uh, Vice Mayor Lunt, on your reelection, and uh, Commissioner John Koulianis, um, whom I've known for a very long time. We sat on the parish council together, and I really got to know um, more about John and who he is as a person. Um, that's why I asked him to be my, um, John and Kay to be our uh, son George's godparents, uh, who's watching today from Jacksonville. And um, your words, you know, they were, they were long, but they were perfect, well said. Uh, we know that um, you as a person, you put God first, your family second, and yourself third. But Tarpon Springs is gonna be right up there too. You know the history of our community. Um, you bleed it, and um, you welcome everyone, as you as you said, and um, you come and talk to people and, and see what their, you know, concerns are and how they're going to affect be affected. So, congratulations, and uh, we look forward to all the fine things that you're going to be doing for our community. <laughs> Georgie. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Anna Saker and George, 1013 Peninsula Avenue. Well, we'd like to congratulate you, and we have no doubt, besides being a great neighbor and a distant relative, uh -huh. we have no doubt that you're going to do what is best for the people of Tarpon with dignity and respect. Thank you. George? Congratulations, John. Hi, George. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're the best neighbor ever. Yeah. <laughs> George Anna Francis, 15 Athens Street. Hey. Um, congratulations to Vice Mayor Lunt again and to John. Um, just, I. The only thing I take issue with with you appointing is that you left the planning and zoning board right when I came on. <laughs> um, but to um, just as Mr. Fackless said, um, the history was long, <laughs> but it's important, and it's so important, and it symbolizes how important it is to have someone like you with your history up on this board, and it brings people that have those types of histories in Tarpon great comfort to have somebody up there that we know is in our corner to hear history of uh, families that grew up on the same streets as my families did and where I live today. Um, so I have no doubt that every decision you make will be in the best interest of Tarpon. I'm sure I won't always agree with them, <laughs> but I know that they are um, coming from a place of love for the city. So I am hoping, just as um, Ms. Protus said, that um, this does bring kind of a new vigor to this committee, uh, to this commission, because I think that this time it really needs it. So. Thanks, Georgiana. You gotta slow down when you run, though. I know, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Runs too fast, I can't keep up. Good evening, William Pittman, 725 Tessier Court, Tarbon Springs. Uh, first of all, congratulations to you, Thank Commissioner you. Kulianos, and. Vice Mayor Lunt. <clears throat> I'm not originally from Tarpon Springs. Uh, my wife and I found Tarpon Springs by accident in 2002 on a vacation road trip, and we were permanent residents by 2004. We fell in love and just came back. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight, as a, I love Tarpon Springs, and I, I wanna see it stay healthy and safe and secure. Um, I want to bring to the attention of the board the surge in the numbers of the vacation homes that are popping up in our residential communities. Um, illegally operating in single family residential neighborhoods. <clears throat> you know, this causes concern for safety of my family and my neighbors. 
um, as we don't know who's coming in and out of these places on, on a weekly basis. Um, I put my glasses on, I'm sorry. Uh, I've been working closely with uh, the Code Enforcement Division on the matter, but quite frankly, it's been an uphill battle for both of us. Um, they can't investigate anything unless there's citizen complaints, first of all. And then once the code enforcement contacts these people that are operating illegally, they simply will remove their posts from apps like Airbnb and Verbo, only to a couple weeks later, pop them back up there. They do just enough to where they're in compliance and then they're right back up. Um, I've even been informed of one owner of one of these properties that I guess he makes enough money, he just pays the fines on a regular basis and continues to operate. Um, at the risk of sounding brusque here, it appears to me that the penalties that we're imposing on these people aren't sufficient enough to persuade them to respect and be compliant with our local zoning regulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Um, are there any other comments uh, for let me just ask uh, Commissioner Koulianis or Vice Mayor Lunt. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and uh, catch up on any of the other public comments for anybody that may be here this evening. Chris Robosky, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. So you finally get to hear that from the other side. <clears throat> Congratulations, man. Thanks, Chris. Very much look forward to this day, and, and it's finally here. And thank you, Craig Lunt, for sticking around. Congratulations to you. So we got a lot of work to do, and I know this board can get it done. Uh, I know there's also, it's just sort of bizarre that you didn't have to go through the process of running against opponents this go around, you know, to air what uh, what somebody in opposition might say, but I can say this, that I think people are tired of divisiveness and nobody wanted that. Nobody wanted to deal with that. So just as a reminder, you guys don't have to agree on everything. You don't have to agree on anything, but you ought to be agreeable with each other. That's the main thing. At the end of the day, even best friends can disagree on certain things. But just know that you guys are profession, professionals and, uh, and I know that you respect each other. And just keep showing that, keep being that way. And thanks again. I know there was some question, some doubt perhaps. And now you know you did the right thing. Thanks, Chris. Thanks again. And thank you. Get to work. Thanks, Mr. Roboski. Is there any other, uh, <laughs> any other comments concerning the new uh, elected uh, officials? Um, let me go to, um, uh, Mr. Jump, is there any comments, uh, public comments concerning um, Vice Mayor Lon or Commissioner Koulianis? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed him to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Jacobs, I wanted to ask you, did you want to deal with that one email now or do we want to wait till the... Uh, um, it's actually on the other item, but however you like. Let, let's go ahead and deal with it now. Um, we also accept emails, I'm sorry, comments by email as well. And um, I, we had more than one or just the one? Just the one. Okay. One came in, Ms. Jacobs is going to explain it, and then we need to do a little action uh, concerning the commission. 
Mayor and Commissioners, um, I have received a public submission to be read into the record tonight that I believe is in violation of Article 3, Section 8 of your rules and procedures. I've distributed a copy for your review on the dais and I'm asking for a motion and a second if the board feels that the submission is in violation or is not in violation. If the submission is found to be in violation, the submission will not be read into the record. If the submission is found not to be in violation, then the submission would be read into the record. Okay. Um, let me, let me uh, just explain. Uh, that should be in front of you, and I hope each of you had a chance to read it. Um, Commissioner Koulianis, do you need a minute or two to read it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. And, and um, Commissioner Lund, you already read it, is that correct? I'm sorry? You've read it already. Oh, you yes, you had the opportunity to read it, okay. Let me just have Commissioner Koulianis finish it. Okay. You okay? Yeah. All right. Um, what I need to do is um, everyone's read it. Um, we've had the opinion of our city clerk and also uh, Attorney Kardash as well concerning this matter. So if you agree that it violates the um, rules, I think it was chapter three section eight is that correct article three section eight article three section eight i'd like <coughs> to have a motion to that effect that it violates and it will not be read into the record it still is a public record it simply will not be read into the record this evening uh motion that it not be read into the record or that it not be is that read into i'll the record second publicly? it okay are um, there any commission comments concerning it I'm not going to ask the public for comments because they're not really sure of the content or they don't know the content of the email. Um, having said that, um, roll call. Please. No, I have comments. Pardon me? I have oh, comments. Oh, you have a comment? Absolutely. Okay. I think this is a, a right to free speech. This is an observation from an outside resident being able to read this. We, at times, as commissioners, took the role of being out there, being critical of other commissioners up here, and we better be able to take the heat. This is what we signed up for. So even during these last couple months, we sat here and we were, you know, some of us were rude to individuals up here. We, 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 made, we, we had uh, the citizens come out there and react to some of our statements. So this commission needs to tread lightly on allowing free speech, allowing stuff that seems to be uh, related to the city. It doesn't address just one individual, talks about all of us. And so at that point, I ask that, you know, you guys are, on a fine line right now about allowing f free speech, public comments be read into the record that's pertaining to past stuff regarding this city's commission, actions and stuff that were stated, and uh, we're, we're really treading on a fine line right now. And I don't know why, now we get this email that comes in, we want to backtrack. It's not it, the right thing. It, it's not just that, Commissioner Kulias, it, it appears to be a fictitious individual as well. People have a right to be anonymous in it, it's our It's not speech. anonymous. It's not anonymous. The person actually puts their name and their email address. There is no such person, our email address. There is an email address, but there is so, no such person. But that, that still doesn't define people have a right to boot, use fictitious names all the time that we've seen in the past. And so we are stifling public comment, free speech, uh, people's thoughts and opinions on this matter and this topic and the state of the current BOC. And I think we need to buckle down. We, we were critical of others, and if we can't take it, then I don't know what we're doing. But now this email comes in, and you know, of course it's gonna be critical of us, but we signed up for this, fictitious or not. People really don't even have to come up here and, <coughs> and give their names when they give public comments or their address. But we sort of force these people to do that in a way, and that could be intimidating. That's why it may be fictitious to some people or is fictitious if you really call it that. So like I said, we are stifling public comment, we are stifling public the free right to speak, and some of these statements are opinions regarding the actions that's taken place in this commission and some thoughts afterwards. So we need to be able to handle it. Uh, I have uh, no further comments. Uh, Okay, I welcome any person to get, obtain a copy of it from the city clerk's office if, if this commission votes uh, not to read it. So, can I, go ahead. Can I make a comment? Um, can I ask the city attorney, what, 
this is this in violation of some ordinance or uh, it's in it's been looked at as in violation of your procedures if an individual had come forward and was speaking and, and saying these same words, where it would not be appropriate. So there are, free speech is, is obviously very important and, it, and is allowed, but there's also lines that pass that too. Okay. And, and but this is did, a determination, I'm sorry, this is a determination of the board. If the board feels like it, it is appropriate to have it read, then, then it is the board's procedure that we are looking at. Okay. What this board is signifying, though, by not allowing these public comments is that we're not going to be able to put up with people's comments whether we agree with them or not. I disagree. This particular statement that he put in here is not just disparaging. It's an attack email from a, a person that doesn't exist. And the, its only reason is to raise vitriol and disparage one of the members of our board. I just do not think that that's an appropriate thing for us to share with the public at this particular time. Um, if the public has really wants to read this kind of garbage, then they should. It's not a matter of free speech. If that person was standing up here, that's speech. This is an anonymous attack thing that's, that's written against, primarily against not the entire board, but one of the, one of the specific members of our board. Well, I, I will say it criticizes a majority of the board. Also makes some statements that include me in a positive manner, in a, the words they put it, which whatever, that is the case. But like I said, we are tiptoeing a fine line of being able to handle criticism. And now that we see that the criticism's coming our way, we're backing down. And as, the, as, the, as it says, shall preserve order and decorum, shall prevent attacks on personalities or opinion of motives of the commission members or others, and shall prevent digression from the question under discussion. There's no question under discussion. This is public comments at the beginning of the meeting, and there will be, a, you know, there's right. no question right now. These are general public comments. Let me, let me just say something. I, if you want to have it read, I'll agree to have it read. But I'll tell you something, I'm very tired. I'm very tired of hearing from residents when the commissioner's speaking about somebody and I get chewed out afterwards because that commissioner was inappropriate in what they said and I should have gaveled them down. You and I we don't have any rules of procedure concerning that. So that's one aspect. Now we get, a, now we get an email that is critical of a commissioner, completely contrary to the rules of procedure and that's okay to read it publicly and I don't get it. It's okay for one way, but it's not okay for the other. Mayor, I mean, we need to way. be consistent with what we do moving forward. We're all gonna have to work as a commission. There is, isn't me against you. It's being working as a board together for the behalf of the residents, not getting mired down in this petty controversy because in, while we're busy dealing with this stuff, nothing else is getting done that's important to the commission. So I'll, I don't have an issue with reading it. It's an ugly email. If y'all wanna know what it is, I don't have any problem. But there's people in this room that love controversy and that's the only reason that they would pursue it. So whatever you wanna do. Mayor, consistently we have allowed public comments. We've uh, let people speak their mind, whether it was from the microphone at home or Zoom or in here in public. Uh, I was very critical of someone out there as a, as a private citizen. I used to get thrown out of City Hall, so I understand but we are stifling speech, whether you guys can I, <laughs> find out if it's you know, anonymous or not. All right, all I'm gonna say I, is this commission, <clears throat> this commission had better make up its mind. If it's stifling, it's stifling for everybody, not just one person or two people or something. That's all I'm saying. And I wanna start being consistent from tonight. And, and I don't, let's get this done and get it over with and move on with the meeting. This is a type of stuff that we're wasting a whole lot of time on. So can I say something? Go ahead. If you're looking to make separation up here, we all can have people that are our friends going up and making comments about each and every one of us will accomplish nothing. That is why we have decorum here and we make sure that no one person is singled out. It is to be addressed to the board. <coughs> if you're choosing not to, we could change our rules of procedure 
and then we can have people coming up here and attacking each one of us for every single decision that you make different than us or I make different than you. We could do that if you'd like. But right now, let me finish. Right now, we have rules that nobody is to be singled out. And we have had that in the past, and that's what you're encouraging. It's not the point of free speech. It's the point of somebody ha having an anger issue, and they would like to single out somebody. And we, we don't have that. That's child's play. If you want child's play, that's what you're asking for. No, sir. I've seen a lot of child's play recently. Okay. So what I'm talking about is consistency and being able to have people speak their mind, whether we like it or not. I've been critical up here. People have been critical of me. They've been critical of this whole board. We as individuals have been critical of residents out here who are afraid to even speak their mind now. And so the fact that we even discussed this to let it go on created the issue. We should have buckled up, let the comment be read, and move forward with the meeting. Well, I disagree. All right, let's have a, we have a motion and we have a second. And the motion is that it is not consistent with our rules of procedure. Is that correct? And it would not be read. All right. Let me go ahead and um, have roll call. Commissioner Koulianis? Uh, yeah. let, hold on before you answer. Yes means it will not be read into the record. No means it will be read into the record. Yes. Commissioner Koulianis? No. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? I'm going to vote no because I mean what I said. We need to clean up our act in the future. And it goes for both, both ways. It can't be nitpicking and backbiting and, and, and we're not gonna make any progress here at the city. So thank you. Um, it's not gonna be read into the record. It's a public document. Any resident is welcome to obtain the copy. Just contact the city clerk's office. I'm sure they'll provide you a copy. Thank you. Um, let's go back to uh, public comments that, on, that is any, anything that is not on the, uh, on the agenda tonight. Is there any public comment on anything that's not on the agenda? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm Katie Taylor, 1991 Douglas Lane, Tarpon Springs. I'm a resident of Tarpon Springs, born and raised here all my life. And I told total homage to you, Commissioner Koulianis, for your history. It was very interesting to know that you went through some of the same things that we've done, we went through in our neighborhood. So I respect you for that, as well as I'm going to visit Koulias, Greece, wherever you your hometown is because I went to school with a lot of Greek rel Greek friends and they were the best friends so I, I, I totally want to do that bucket list to go to see where you come from thank it's you. very interesting Commissioner Lund thank you for visiting uh, our workshop with Rose Cemetery Association because I'm the president of Rose Cemetery Association but that's not what I'm here for tonight but thank you for visiting our workshop and be a part of hearing what we're trying to do in our community for, uh, for, uh, for Rose Cemetery um, I'm here tonight because um, I, I wanted to ask if the, the, the road at um, Lime Street and Stafford Avenue is shut down. Every artery from Mears to Tarpon Avenue in my community, the whole is shut down where we can't get from alternate 19 to new 19. The only street that looks like it'll allow us to access Alternate 19 to New 19 is Lime Street. That's the only street that goes all the way through. It connects us to the post office, the churches, the police department, Wall Street, Wall, all, the, all that whole neighborhood. So I'm asking, can, the, can you open up Safford Avenue and Lime Street so it would, that at the trail, just at the trail, so cars can go from Alternate 19 to New 19? Right now we're having to go all the way to, to Martin Luther King, or go up to Tarpon Avenue to, uh, to get to, uh, from one point to the other. Cuts through the You trail. open up mirrors all the way through, trail. but you shut down every other avenue within our community. Lime Street is the only one right now that I can see that open up both areas. And also you're working on a plan that you're supposed to be working on a plan at the corner of Distance Avenue and Lime Street, very dangerous intersection. They had a few accidents there. I've been here last year, I think it was, where y'all working on a plan. I guess you're still working on it because nothing has been done. 
at an intersection. This, the stop sign sits way too far off the back of that road. Accidents have happened there. So it's a, it's a dangerous point there. So I'm hoping that you look at that and do something about the corner of Lamb and Levis as a safety point to get a four-way stop sign there and open Lime Street uh, at, the, at the corner of Safford Avenue and, and um, Lime Street. So that's why I'm here tonight. Hopefully something can be done about that. Uh, Ms. Taylor, the, the trail for the cuts through the trail to open up these <clears throat> streets are going to be up to the county. Um, that's their trail that goes through the city of Tarpon Springs. And um, that was decided a long time ago. And we can get you the information on who you would need to speak to to the county to get some additional information concerning that. Um, if we could do that. Yeah, that would be greatly appreciated because the county don't live in my neighborhood. They Pardon don't me? have to go to church there. They don't have to go to the stores. They don't have to go out of their way to get to some place. So whoever made that decision wasn't, I don't know if they checked it, the community it, or not. I understand, but that's, that's just the way it is right now. Well, hopefully y'all can help us out with it. So I look forward to hearing from you to get something done about that. All right. Thank, Thank you, Ms. You. Taylor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Maggie Miles, 433 East Boyer Street. Um, I sent an email today to the commissioners. Um, it maybe got there too late, but um, June 19, 2021, a day long recognized as Juneteenth, was officially declared a federal holiday. This was a long overdue milestone for the United States of America and for the black American community in particular. Here's a bit of history surrounding this holiday to emphasize its significance. In 1863, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing more than three million slaves in America. However, it took over two years for this news to reach all the Confederate states and be enacted nationwide. It wasn't until June 19, 1865, when Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas, enforcing a proclamation that there was an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former slaves and masters. This date, is the true end to slavery here in the United States and also recognized by many as the American Second Independence Day. Juneteenth has been celebrated by black Americans for many years as it marks their official independence from slavery. In fact, it is the longest running holiday recognized by black Americans. It was truly a momentous occasion and the importance of that day has been overlooked for far too long. For some, it is a day of celebration, and for others, an opportunity to reflect on our country's history and the experience of early black Americans. Although we cannot erase or undo history, we can make it known that we understand how important this date is and make a statement by honoring it as the true American holiday that it is. I hope that on this Juneteenth and all Juneteenths to come, we can all take a moment to truly think about our nation's past and history. I'm requesting for the city of Tarpon Springs Commission to follow and move um, as Pinellas County government has done and made on February 26th of this year to recognize Juneteenth as an official and celebrated holiday. Public offices close. My second comment, I don't know, I got two minutes. On Tuesday, March 28th, 2023 at 5 a.m., a horrific accident occurred on US-19, resulting in the death of a 17-year-old girl. Our hearts go out to her family. My reason for stating this is traffic was affected for hours, and especially for travelers headed southbound on US-19, when they had to be diverted to alternate 19, a two-lane road unequipped to handle the magnitude of traffic. As travelers tried to recover from this on Wednesday, yet another accident, March 29th, at 7.25 a.m. on US-19 by Innisbrook entrance, causing the same backup and diversion. Tarpon Springs needs another north-south corridor, and the Belcher Road Distant Avenue connection would help to eliminate, mitigate some of the traffic diversions to US or alternate 19. Unless you are a person who is constantly inconvenienced by the constant backlog of traffic, you will not understand. A local resident could easily jump on distant, connect to Belcher, and be at St. Pete College, Dunedin, Clearwater, or St. Pete in no time without having to enter the US-19 Speedway. 
I am aware of the history that has been stalling this connection. It is 2023. Times have changed and some mindsets need to change too. We need to move forward on what is the best for the residents of this city and this county and not what is best for a select few. I will request that the City of Tarpon Springs Commission revisit this issue and vote for the connection to move forward. The time is now. Thank you for your time. Good evening, Joan Jennings, 2204 Pine Drive. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I was extremely saddened to learn of the death of Miss Annie Dabbs. Um, I was highly honored to count both Annie and Peggy Prestis as my friends, and they introduced me to a lot about the history and culture of Tarpon Springs. I'd like to personally thank City Manager LaCouris for erecting a wonderful memorial garden on uh, the corner of Distant and MLK, right across from uh, Annie's home, honoring her in her memory. It's really beautiful, Mark, thank you. And um, her daughter, Georgia, came to town and Mayor Vaticiotis gave a lot of his time to the concerns of the family and offering the assistance of city facilities to take care of Mrs. Uh, Dab's family. And I just wanted to tell people that the uh, service for Ms. Dabbs will be at 11 o'clock at Mount Moriah Church with burial at uh, Rose Cemetery following. And uh, I'm sure she'll be afforded the honors she deserves. Thank you. Thank what you. day? What day? Saturday, I'm sorry. Saturday. What's Saturday? 11 o'clock, Mount Moriah. Thank you all. Okay. Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive, Tarpon Springs. Hold on to your seat, Commissioner Kriya. I want to congratulate you on what you said. Mayor Batikiotis, I'm very disappointed. Whether we know or not, how do you know this is a fictitious person? You must read when people say things. You have said things against commissioners, against the former city attorney, which was outrageous. You said it publicly. Someone sent in a letter, the citizens have a right to know. You don't silence when something like this comes up. So I congratulate you on bringing it forward. I'm very disappointed in the commission, no matter how bad it is, and if it's a lie, we will know it's a lie. Don't protect each other. You are subject to everything once you sit in these seats. I know that for what they've been doing to saying about me and other citizens in Tarpon. And when y'all went against Townsend Terrapani and accused him of things which weren't true. So we have to have transparency. You talk about it. We have to be open, whether we like it or not, for shame tonight. Shame. Good evening, David Ballard Geddes, Jr. I live on Georgia Avenue in Palm Harbor. The Hillsborough River was dyed green for St. Patrick's Day, as well as the Ohio River um, was also dyed green. I called the question the last red tide that we had last month. I've never heard of a rhido fill bloom happening in March. Um, who's to say that the last red tide that we had wasn't someone uh, dying the Gulf of Mexico with red dye and purposefully killing the fish as an act of environmental terrorism. That last red tide was out of season um, and I, I feel as though somebody could possibly use iron filings coated in poison to create an illusion of red tide I'm not so sure how it happened in March, but I do call that into question when the Declaration of Independence states to ravage the coast. Um, issues like that last red tide in early March uh, call concern for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geddes. Are there any other public comments? Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone 
online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll close public comments um, and we're going to go to the, um, let me do the special consent first since we waived our rules, get that one out first, that's the easy stuff. Uh, number one is appointment of commissioner to Homeless Leadership Network. Um, currently, Commissioner Kulias, you're, you're a member of that. Did you want to say a few words about what that is? Oh, I want to say it's a very time-consuming committee. Uh, it is very difficult in being that committee and, and trying to get representation for the city of Tarpon Springs because uh, they seem to think Clearwater South is Pinellas County. So I would ask this, whoever is appointed this board, it's a tough one and it takes up some big portions of majority of your midday and, and even your Fridays as well. But uh, I did share uh, through the city manager, the NOFO information regarding uh, being able for the Shepherd Center to apply and be active and, and part of the, the HLA to gain points to get a big substantial amount of money through grant opportunity for the many different reasons in which the Shepherd Center can apply for underneath the, the NOFO. And so I would ask for someone uh, who can have the patience that you don't necessarily have to be at all meetings um, present. They have the Zoom option as well. But um, I definitely think it, this is one of the tougher boards because you, you will get a lot of emails regarding uh, there's different types of meetings. There's uh, point in time moving forward meetings. There's regular HLA meetings. There is um, uh, there's a there's once you become a, an official or, or on, on the voting where you help decide where the money's going to go for some of these applications for the for the NOFO and uh, I just would ask for somebody who's going to have some patience and the ability to take on this challenge because um, it's definitely a difficult one and uh, I thank this board for giving the opportunity to come off of it as I mentioned it, it does at times interfere with my business opportunities and uh, you know I did it for a year, but I, I think someone else who may have the energy or the ability, the appetite to tackle it, who's gonna be able to work with the Shepherd Center nonstop. Uh, I've told the Shepherd Center in a very friendly but stern way, it's time for them to get involved. They have more than enough people to help delegate uh, someone from there to be a part of this HLA for the NOFO so we can really try to get money for them. And uh, I just look to see where it goes from here, but it's, it's gonna be a tough one for whoever goes on it. Are these meetings by Zoom or do you have to drive down there? Some, some are by Zoom. Some meetings are held at the Habitat for Humanity um, office right off of uh, pretty much by like 580 and 49th Street a little bit. And then some meetings are held down at one of the, uh, a church down in St. Pete yeah. that borders Pinellas Park. So it's, I was on that committee and, and, um, and I too did not find it very satisfying and um, it is time consuming and, and um, I kind of question what we get out of our membership on that. I, I can see the value of working closely with the Shepherd Center and our, uh, and our uh, homeless um, outreach. outreach committee. That's very important. And so um, let, let me ask commissioners, do, you, do any of you have an interest in serving on that? Uh, in that position, in the homeless leadership position, or um, which would include the um, homeless outreach uh, committee uh, function, and and if if you don't, then um, what I'd like to do is um, have the city manager do some research for us, and as far as really what the value of serving and participating in that is, I know. We should have somebody on the homeless outreach because that's important. I've served on that as well, and that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. And so we do need to have a point of contact there. Uh, so is there any interest on anyone serving on both or just one? Well, the homeless outreach is our community in which we talk with the local merchants and you know business owners and other people involved with organizations on how we can fix some of these little issues that we come across within our town. But the Homeless Leadership Alliance deals with the county as a whole. And like I said, there, there are some individuals that represent other cities and municipalities. They 
they hog up those meetings. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it, I, I don't know what our value is unless we get organizations in town that are, you know, providing to be involved with it. Because it's hard to fight for some, some of our organizations if they're not there. Um, would you be interested in continuing to serve on the homeless outreach? Um, with the homeless outreach isn't an issue. No, it's, we, I mean, it's, it's quarterly. So it's, you know, quarterly at one o'clock, we usually have those meetings. So that, that's not an issue at all for me. Okay. Why don't we, um, let me think about how to do, do well, let me ask you, I didn't get anything. Uh, the commissioners, do, you, do any of you have an interest in serving on that homeless leadership council down south? All right. City manager, of course, if you could get us some research and maybe see what the value has been. I know Commissioner Donovan was on that committee before I was on the committee. He expressed the same sentiments that I have and the same sentiments that Commissioner Cuyaz has. I know we used to give them money. We stopped giving them money because we weren't getting anything out of it as well. So let's see if we can get some information on it. And Commissioner Cuyaz, if you will, would you continue working with the homeless outreach? Sure. Okay. No we problem. don't need to reappoint that's you in, on that. That's okay. in town. Right. I feel like I, I can talk with the, the organizations in town and the different departments, and I feel like I can make a difference or at least you know, be able to... Uh, mediate certain issues that do come across. So I absolutely have no problem working with the homeless outreach in town. Okay. Do you want to say anything, Commissioner? No. Uh, so no. Okay. Um, so th we're going to end that one, um, unless there's any public comments on this particular item. Is there any public comments? This is on uh, the Homeless Leadership Council down south. Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to comment on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, we'll just end that one on that note. And number two, appointment of commissioner to the general employees pension board. Um, let me start that one out. I'm, I'm on that um, committee and um, my, my uh, predecessor was uh, Commissioner Sieber, I believe, and I took over from her as commissioner. And then when I became mayor, I was gonna give it up, but I was asked to stay on that um, committee. It's a very, very important committee, very important board, and it's literally an autonomous board to make uh, investment decisions on about $25 million that actually belong to our city employees. So it's a highly um, responsible position as well, and it takes one that there needs to be a lot of care with whatever decisions you make. And so, so far we've been doing pretty good with it, and I made it known that um, I was going to um, pass on continuing with that. And prior to, um, uh, and this was about a year ago, I, I told them I was not gonna continue after a year, and then prior to Commissioner uh, Kulianis becoming a uh, commissioner elect, I'd actually um, discuss that with him if he would be willing to serve on that. Commissioner Kulianis, uh, I'm not sure if you said that in your family history, you're, you're a CPA and also you, uh, you're a financial uh, investment analyst as well, along with other skills. So I'd asked him if he would consider. So I'm going to ask you, would you be willing to serve on that committee? Yes. Okay. So does any other commissioner want to compete for that job? It's, it's a highly specialized job. Not that I, um, I guess the engineer in me kind of approached things from a very careful perspective. And I think the, the, um, the, 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 uh, um, um, the employees appreciated that. So if I can have a motion and a second to appoint motion Commissioner to appoint Second. Commissioner Cuglianos to the position. Is there any public comment on this item? I'll second, Mayor. Oh, no, there was no second yet? I second already. Okay. So we had a first and a second. No public comments. Um, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. <sighs> and we do not have any raised hands at this time. All right. Uh, if I can have a, if there's no further comments, roll call, please. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? Yes. 
Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vaticiotis? Yes. Um, so we're gonna to go to the um, next item, which is the resolution 2023-15 20, appointment of the vice mayor. Um, before we get into that, um, I'm gonna read the rules of procedure that, can, that govern that. And then um, um, we're going to nominate, um, appoint, nominate individuals, which doesn't take a motion, it's just nominating, it's, it's explained in a second. Um, and then we appoint by motion in a second and, and vote in favor. And then that person's name is, is placed into the resolution and then Mr. Salzman reads the resolution by title and then that gets approved. And then at some point we'll actually gonna include uh, during the motion phase public comments. So let me go ahead and read the uh, uh, rules for appointing a vice mayor and uh, that person presides in the case of my absence. At the first meeting of the Board of Commissioners in April of each year, the City Commission by resolution shall appoint a Vice Mayor. If both the Mayor and Vice Mayor are absent for any meeting, the most senior member of the City Commission shall preside at such meeting. The Commission shall select a Vice Mayor at the first meeting in April. The following nomination and selection process shall be used to the annual selection for the annual selection of the vice mayor. A, the nomination process shall be explained to the commission and to the public by the mayor and parliamentarian, which we're doing right now. B, the chair opens the floor for nomination. C, each member of the commission upon recognition by the chair shall have a right to place a nomination for the honorary office of vice mayor, the name of any other commissioner or themselves before nominations are closed. D, when all nominations have been made, the chair will so announce and declare nominations closed. If only one commissioner is nominated, that person will be declared by the chair to be elected and shall serve until a successor is elected. F, if more than one nomination has been made, selection of vice mayor will be accomplished by motion. G, if no nominations are made, or if no nominee is elected by a majority vote, the most senior commissioner shall be appointed as vice mayor. So those are the rules of procedure. And so before I open the floor for nomination, I wanna say a couple of words. And, um, and, and I've got, I'm just gonna say a couple of words. Um, tonight I'm gonna to approach this from what I believe is in the best interest of the city of Tarpon Springs. Um, and hopefully this commission has seen my memorandum from last week um, that presents my thoughts and uh, on the current situation that we have. I think Commissioner Couillat touched a little bit on it with that letter and I think many people can sense my frustration. Um, I spent a lot of time up at City Hall in the office and I know a lot of people in Tarpon Springs a lot of people. And I'm the person that people go to to file and make complaints in a variety of different ways. Just for you know, people that uh, speak too long on the commission, um, they are cr too critical of individuals, of residents. Um, I hear it from um, you know, people that are too critical of, of, uh, of um, commissioners. Others calling and saying that was not fair. I should have gaveled that resident down. Um, there's also the issue of, um, of uh, commissioners with extracurricular communications. After matters have been finaled, they actually go out into town and, and, and try and explain things. And I think in fairness to the residents that they approach, those residents are frustrated from the decisions been made and then basically I, I would assume that they have a few words to say to the commissioner and then things get out of hand and then what I get back is, is basically the worst of that com conversation. And um, I've had lengthy conversations with the city manager on this and both our attorneys, Attorney Salzman and also uh, Attorney Kardash even to the extent that we're planning 
a, a, um, a workshop very early May to address all these things and to drill down and to make sure commissioners understand that their authority is policy. It's policy. It's not going and finding somebody in the community and asking because they've learned of a problem that's got nothing to do with policy. It's got to do with administration and wanting to know how to help. And that, that is outside their purview. That's an example. And, and then we had some issues with that in the very recent past. You heard about that tonight as well. And that I want to try and we shouldn't, there shouldn't be any excuse for that to occur after being on the commission for one year. And so what happens is that there's this acrimony, there's this controversy that occurs in the commission, and we just need to basically start learning to act as commissioners dealing with policy, letting the things that are administrative be dealt with, with this man sitting to my left, and whoever's in his seat. I'm not gonna go and try and help somebody because they sent in an email and you know there's something wrong with the neighbor's property, so I'm gonna go investigate what the neighbor's problem is. I'm not gonna do that, that's, that's his job. And the reason why is if I, if I get involved, then basically I deserve everything I get. And quite frankly, I hear a lot of that from residents because they feel a lot of people don't have any business from the commission getting involved. And, and they could be very nice to the commissioner that's out there, but then once they think about it a little bit, they come back with comments to me that is completely contrary to what maybe the commissioner thought he heard. And then all of a sudden is, is who, who, who said what? and that causes controversy. Um, we got this pretty ugly email in the mail tonight from uh, this, early, uh, this afternoon, which is a, what I would call a hit piece. It's just a hit piece. It, was an, it wasn't anonymous, it's a fictitious name, tried to give the impression that it was from a real individual. The address doesn't even exist. It's on Riverside Drive. The address doesn't even exist. The person doesn't exist. It, it, you know, wherever you look, it doesn't exist. So we could actually throw this out to the community and we would be playing the same game as what we were being criticized with some of our commissioners going out in the community and doing that and also maybe going a little too far with what we say publicly from the day off when somebody's trying to make a case for themselves. And in the meantime, we've had Anclote Harbor, which we hired a special counsel to deal with that matter because of the major distraction that occurs. We've gotten into some very in-depth public records um, matters concerning our former city attorney and his law firm, Tras Dagnall, that we're still dealing with. We got a public records request in, I believe it was yesterday, because of some things that were said about them. They feel that it was defamatory and slanderous, and I would be more surprised if we don't get a lawsuit than if we do get a lawsuit out of this thing. So I'm waiting uh, for that to happen. And as I said in my memorandum, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't come to City Hall waiting for the shoe to drop on a lawsuit, another public records request, more complaints from the residents about some commissioner or commissioners going out in the community. Um, and then, and then there's a combination of one commissioner saying something, and, and then those people go to another commissioner, and then that commissioner, um, and then that commissioner gets dragged into it as well. So we need to kind of mature as a board, just like a, a, a board of directors of any corporation. We're a municipal corporation. We need to act like a municipal corporation, and so that's the purpose of that um, workshop that we're going to have. Um, in about three weeks. So having said that, and I don't want to fuel more controversy tonight, and I'm certainly not going to take sides with any commissioner. And, and so what I highly recommend with regard to vice mayor is that we maintain the status quo and continue with vice mayor uh, Craig Lunt as a vice mayor. I, I'm not going to support changing horses in the midstream of a potential lawsuit, public records, 
acrimony, people that are unhappy in the downtown, the way things have gone, and a number of other issues. And the reason why is I, maybe it's a little selfish on my part, but I hear about it a great deal. And this man sitting next to me knows I hear about it a great deal. And quite frankly, I can't get anything done. I spent, on that letter that came in today, I spent about two hours on it trying to figure out what it was about, who it was from, the whole thing, dealing with the attorneys to see what we needed to do. That was two hours that I could be spending on something else if not being home with my family. So I think that we need to be fair with each other. We need to be fair with the community, the residents, and I think we, we need to, we basically need to understand we just simply need to be kind. Everywhere, all the way around, we just simply need to be kind. And that's going to be the focus of that workshop. So, again, I'm going to ask the commission that we maintain the status quo. It's not a personal issue with any particular uh, commissioner. It's just that I, right now I think that's the safest thing to do is to continue on with Vice Mayor Preglon. He's done a terrific job. In my opinion, he's the least controversial commissioner that we've got on the board. And he may not know as many people as others, but he certainly um, came back into office without opposition. So um, that's all I want to say, and I'm going to ask any other commissioners if they want to say I nominate myself as, well. as vice mayor. Pardon me? I nominate myself as vice mayor. Okay. Well, we haven't opened the floor to nominations yet, but uh, do you have anything you want to say as far as? Um, mayor, as you said, you're, you're, you're going for the status quo, and that's unfortunate. You, you make comments that are really only directed towards one commissioner at the moment, and the fact that you're not willing to make a change based off the status quo and, and some of the you know, issues that have come around, come around based off temperament, dealing with the public, is it's disappointing because you said last year you would rotate not only, I don't need to fight for myself, I, I've proven to the residents, I've proven I've had the temperament to deal with tough issues. Um, I've shown I've been able to be professional to city staff, to the residents, to the community. And it seems like, you know, you want to keep the status quo maybe to not offend one commissioner up here for whatever reason. And it's just not acceptable. This is a year of not the status quo where, where it's, we know you see the public records they're they're coming either way you know commissioner Lunt sitting in the vice mayor spot's not going to make a difference on the amount of um public records that are coming in or whatever they're doing on that end and so um i understand vice mayor Lunt's done a great job for the time being but it's time for a change and uh, i believe the city manager can agree with me i send in if if it's not you it's probably me sending in the most concerns and complaints from the residents. And so uh, I do a good job in, in trying to be that communicator and bridging the gap between the community. And uh, I believe if you're not able to run a meeting, I can be here to run a meeting in a very efficient, professional manner that can uh, get this, you know, bridge the gap between all issues that we talk about. And simply the status quo isn't gonna do it now. This board needs to step up and come up with their own ideas this couple coming year. And so, you know, I, I think I'm ready up for the challenge and any ribbon cuttings or anything like that can be addressed to me and I'll be able to make, make it if you're not there. But as polarizing as I was before, I don't believe I'm as polarizing as I am today. And so I, I've helped to try to fight for the community. They know it, but it's, it's time to switch it up. The status quo is what you're asking for and that's, that's not what we need to do. We need to keep pushing forward to get things done for this community. It's time to rotate. I have a big uh, uh, knowledge of a lot of people in the community, and then that's an important deal. You know, I, I understand Vice Maryland. It's a good thing to, you know, go under the radar and not know so many people, and he does a great job reading a lot of material and, you know, finding stuff that we don't and <coughs> saving us money at times. But uh, I believe it, it's time for that change, and that's why I've nominated myself. Okay. Are there any other comments? Yeah, I, I um, initially I thought that keeping Commissioner Lunt would be a good thing, uh, Vice Mayor Lunt, and and I still think that I think he's been a dignified 
representative of our, of our town. He is uh, obviously not controversial and all those things you said, I, I agree with you. However, if a situation exists with one commissioner, I don't think it's fair that we not rotate it around. Um, and I think that, um, and I just, I agree, I don't, I don't know what, again, the correlation is between who's vice mayor and, and public records requests. I, I'm, not, I'm not certain that I understand that. Um, but I think that um, I would second uh, Commissioner Kulias being the vice mayor. Um, I think that, um, and, and it, it has, and it doesn't have anything to do with status quo or any of that, that this position as vice mayor has historically been given to different commissioners. Um, and, and I don't think it's, you know, whether it's, I don't, and I don't think it's anywhere in the charter it talks about ribbon cuttings. It talks about whether he could take over in the case that the mayor is unavailable to run the meeting. Uh, we're all available to go cut ribbons. Uh, he doesn't have to be the, it doesn't have to be a mayor or vice mayor to cut a ribbon. I can show up to cut a ribbon. If he can't make it, he can call me and, or he can call the, uh, the, uh, the city attorney and let him know he's not coming and the city attorney call me and I'll go over and cut the ribbon if, if neither one of the other commissioners are available. So I don't think that ribbon cutting is the issue. I don't think that, uh, that it should be, um, that we shouldn't rotate it and I think, uh, Commissioner Kulias would make an excellent vice mayor. I'd be uh, happy let to me, serve. Let me make him. it clear: it's more than one commissioner. I'm not just isolating it to one commissioner. Okay. It's more than one commissioner. I'm not going to say anything more about it. We're going to get to it at the pub at the workshop, okay. but that's okay. I, uh, what we'll do is we're going to open it up to nominations, okay. and then we'll have a motion as far as if there's multiple nominations. So let me ask if there's any other commissioners that have got anything to say. Yes, Go I have ahead. something that I would be happy to say. Um, I just want you to know when I get up here to speak um, and I know exactly where the elephant in the room is in this discussion, um, and let me have this very close so you can hear what I have to say. Um, on my decisions that I make, I did not grow up here in Tarpon Springs, such as uh, Commissioner Coolius, Commissioner Coolianus. So when I sit up here, so and so is not my friend. I don't have so and so as my attorney. I don't have so and so paying my rent. I have, when I make my decision up here, I make my decision according to the rules and regulations and common sense and transparency. Um, I know that when I say something and it's somebody's attorney or somebody's close friend or possibly I shouldn't have said something that somebody else got offended, I'm going to get a whole bunch of comments from people and I expect that. It's not going to I'm, I'm sorry that that is like that, but that's who I am. I'm going to say what's right and what's wrong, and I'll continue to say what's right and what's wrong because I don't choose whether I like the person or don't like the person. I read all of the comments that have been sent in. I sat on this board for six and a half years on the Board of Adjustments. I've had friends come before me. I had to make decisions that were not, not decisions that I wanted to make, okay? I sat up here also with a very easy decision to make, and I listened to Commissioner <coughs> Coolia say, oh my God, this is like one of the toughest decisions I ever had to make. It wasn't one of the toughest decisions I ever had to make. I've made a lot tougher decisions. And believe me when I tell you, Commissioner Coolies, you're going to make decisions up here that people are not going to like you, whether you're right, wrong, or indifferent. Commissioner Coolianis, you as well, you'll find this out. Maybe you'll have a softer demeanor than me. I'm not going to say no. But I'm up here to 
make my decision. And I apologize if my demeanor comes across as I'm from New York. I am from New York. I didn't grow up here. I'm going to speak like a New Yorker. And for that matter, if people are not used to it or don't like it, I can't change. I'm still going to be me. So I'm still going to make those decisions accordingly. I have no care and concern at the time when I chose to be a commissioner to be up here for any sort of honor or anything like that. I came up here because I was watching a commission not run with the city in its best interest and I want to have the city in its best interest. And I will continue to make decisions like that accordingly. As far as what comes about with whether I should be the next vice mayor, I don't really care. I really don't. It is not, it doesn't change my thinking or anything like that. Um, personally, I would second the vote for Commissioner Lunt and that's how I would vote. I do think, just for no other reason, I think you need more experience. I like you, you know I, we ha we're friends. Um, I'm still gonna make the decisions if somebody comes before me. I'm not going to make a decision whether they're my friend or not my friend. I'm gonna, if, if the evidence is put in front of me, I'm gonna read the evidence, I'm gonna make a decision and if they need me to apologize that I didn't deliver it nicely enough, I'll deliver it nicer. But that's who I am. I'm not changing, I can't change. If anybody doesn't realize it, I'm 68 years old. I'm not changing, I'm gonna deliver you the way it is. I, I know what went on in this one of these past things and I do wanna to touch base on this as well. Harry came before me. I spoke with Harry at an epiphany way before I was even elected. And I like Harry, and I said I like Harry, and I had no qualms about the decision I made. I thought I treated you with respect. I always want to treat you with respect. I made a decision on it, and that's where it ends. I'm, I, I just want people to know that I'm not here to insult anybody or make any sort of attacks. Period. That's what okay. I want to say. Well, That's good. Mayor, he did make a comment regarding paying people's rent, and I just want him to articulate what did he mean by that. I, why don't we just get on with a motion of the, the vice mayor? And saying. let me ask: Is there any any other comments? We have no other comments, so I'm going to open the floor for nominations. I nominate myself as okay. vice mayor. Is there any other nominations? Craig Lunt. Vice Mayor Lunt. Okay. Are there any other nominations? I close the floor to nominations. Now, I'd like to have a motion and a second on anybody. I make a motion on the next vice mayor for the upcoming year. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, is there any discussion among the commission? Are there any public comments? Good evening, Jerry Theophilopoulos, 649 East Tarpon Avenue. Uh, I'm here in support of Mr. Koulias with regards to the vice mayorship that uh, he's seeking. He's born here, he's raised here, uh, and quite frankly, I believe he's got more energy than the rest of the board combined. I see him walk in the streets, knock in the doors. He's down at the sponge docks talking to the merchants. He's downtown talking to the merchants. And, uh, you know, when he was elected, somebody had told me we got a bull in the china shop. And I think he's pleasantly surprised all of us uh, with his temperament and his demeanor and how he's handled himself. And, and I was thoroughly impressed tonight. And I, I walked in halfway, so I'm not sure what it's about, but I will ask him later on when he had apologized to Jacob Carr about something he may have said because uh, it takes a real man to apologize in a public forum like this. And, and I'm here uh, to support him. 
Uh, he's grown up. I've watched him grow up. I know his family real well. Um, I just want to touch one other little thing. And when I was up here a couple weeks ago, uh, I went to church that following Sunday, and it was like a barrage of people on me. And they made comments about Mr. Eisner. They made comments about Mr. Lunt. And I went back and watched the video because when you're up here, you don't absorb it as much. And, and sometimes you do have to put a little bit of honey on what you're saying because it does come across uh, differently when you're here and then when you watch it on the uh, TV. Uh, but I hope you guys can all become one group and you know, avoid the divisiveness that's been going on. And I know this is uh, not in line, but I want to thank Captain Young, uh, Chief Young, excuse me, because he's done a fabulous job, and he should have had that position a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Theophilopoulos. Anita Protus, 901 Bayshore Drive. I support Commissioner Kuya. Uh, I'm not a real fan of his sometimes. He knows it. He's called me some nasty names, but that's all right. He's, I'm older than him, and I can forgive him. But I won't forgive him because it's not true. But it's time to get something fresh. Not that you're still, Mr. Lunt. It's time to start healing this commission. It's time to start healing the community. We've been divided too long. There's too much hate out on the street, and it's got to stop. We are a friendly family community. We've got a new commissioner on board. Everyone is thrilled. Let's make some more change and see what happens in Tarpon. I do support you, Paniotti. Don't fall out of your chair again. But it's time that we do not keep rolling along and rolling along. Too much ugliness, Mayor Batikotis. Too much ugliness out there and not enough trust. Katie Taylor again, 1991 Douglas Lane, Toppin Springs, Florida. <laughs> this is my first commissioner's meeting in a minute, but I am, a, <laughs> I am amazed at what I've seen here tonight. <laughs> um, gosh, woke me right up. But I would like to put my, my vote toward this gentleman on the, on the right-hand side. No disrespect, Commission, Vice Mayor Lunt. But your transparency is, is, is what brought, draws me to you. You're quite transparent. And the things that you brought forth here tonight kind of like amazes me that it's being shut down. So you are for breath of fresh air. Maybe it's time for some change to see some things happen a little different. I've, I've been in meetings that you've been in. So I do, I have a little history with you behind you. So do, yeah. And I, I'm just baffled about the email. I just, I'm, I'm just curious what's in the email that y'all don't want us to know. But you know, just me, but that's my comment. Thank y'all for hearing me. Amen. Thank you. George Anna Francis, 15 Athens Street. Uh, the first part of my comments actually have to do with the previous issue um, is regarding the email. Um, but it's been looped into this discussion as the mayor has um, made it relevant. So this board ran on transparency, and every single board member up here campaigned at a certain location um, and the, that location is owned by an individual who is um, ran an anonymous website that is currently being sued by our former city attorney Tom Trask. So to sit here tonight and hear that this anonymous email, which I have no idea what it says, but I think we can all ascertain pretty much who it's about and what it's about. And I don't care what it says, I have a pretty good idea. My position has always been on anonymous people, anonymous websites, that they're, they're cowards. And I think whoever wrote this email with a fictitious name is a coward as well. Um, but to actively campaign with an anonymous group, who we all know who that person is, and then to come here and say that that's, we can't reveal this email, and then to base your, and solidify your decision that Craig should stay on based on an email that you voted that you won't let us hear. 
And you're, it, so we're all talking about this issue that we can't hear. And Mr. Mayor, you made your position clear about the email that you didn't want it to be read. And then when it's your turn to vote, you vote no when your vote is completely moot, that no, yes, the email should be read. Um, so that's been noted. Um, I didn't know what was gonna happen with the appointment for tonight, so that was a interesting twist. And um, I knew from the beginning that this was going to happen. Craig, I think you've done a great job as vice mayor. I don't think there was ever any plan that the, the mayor had in place, but then to keep you as vice mayor. And we don't need the status quo right now. I support Commissioner Kulia. I mean, we need people that can change or grow. And I don't want anybody sitting up here that says, I won't change. Not, not, I never want anyone on this board saying that they will not change, especially after the reaction that a specific board member has gotten from our community. We don't need that. And if you wanna pick on somebody because they have support, someone like Jerry T, you know, we're, in our 30s, I'm still in my 30s too, Paniotti, and we need people, mentors like that to grow and to help our community. That's not a negative thing, that's a very positive thing. So I want people that have that type of community support from successful businessmen and lawyers like that in our community. So you have my support. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Chris Roboski, 1602 Gulf Beach Boulevard, Tarpon Springs, 34689. So, I, uh, wow. I had hoped that this would not be a controversial topic. <laughs> I do recall, I believe the mayor said that he would rotate, but he said he would do Craig Lunt, then Eisner, and then Mr. Kulias. I believe that's what was stated. Uh, my memory may be faulty on that. Um, but things happen. You may have changed your mind on that. That's fine. I got no issue with that. That's why I appreciate Commissioner Eisner saying he would just go with the, <laughs> because what difference does it make? <laughs> I, I am puzzled that anybody would make a huge issue out of this. And, you know, if uh, Ms. Coolyhouse wants it, by all means, man. I mean, but again, it's just bizarre because we don't need this kind of divisiveness. I think the mayor was trying to say, let's just whoosh, get this done without all this drama. And okay, so now it's drama. Uh, with the email thing, I do believe in the First Amendment and I, uh, I strongly believe that uh, emails written to the city should be read into the record. Now it is interesting that the person made a fictitious name now that becomes a weird gray area because I have to state my name and address up here. So I expect as the previous speaker for most people to do that. But as you stated, some people are afraid to do so because of repercussions. Now the previous speaker called those people cowards. I would not do that. There are countries in this world where people could be executed for standing up for their rights and putting their name to that. Now, I'd like to think that that's not the case here. Of course, not executed, but who knows? Retribution can come in all forms. So I, I'm torn on the email. I think it should have been read just because now it really blew it up and made it even more dramatic. So that's kind of ridiculous. But Again, going back to my previous comments, you, gotta, you guys are all professionals, so whether you're up here on the dais or you're out on the streets or back at home, just act professionally. I mean, amongst, especially with each other. There's no need to be pointing fingers at each other and calling each other's names. That just doesn't help. A lot of work's gotta get done up here, and it ain't gonna get done with the name calling. And you know, there's people in this country that are working actively to divide us, to get us to hate X, Y, Z. And there are people in this town who do the exact same thing, and the mayor alluded to that. There are people that will work to create this drama, that will create this divisiveness, especially amongst you all. And that's not good. And don't allow it to happen. And don't play into it, you know. 
I mean, if you want that gig, go for it. But it ain't that big a deal, man. I mean, in the in the large scheme of things, but go for it. I mean, I am not trying to belittle the position, and you did a good job. The good news is our mayor shows up. I think you missed one meeting, so our mayor will be here. The the vice mayor will not be necessary. Uh, but uh, I just hope we can get past all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is day one, man. <laughs> So let's get some work done, guys. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Emelina Makers Post, 124 Tarpon Avenue, Ambiance Hair Salon. Um, congratulations on John. We got change, and I want to see more change with Panayati. So thank you. That's all thank I wanted you. to say. Are there any other public comments? Okay, Mr. Jump, are there any remote access comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Um, are there any commission comments concerning the motion and the second? I do want to make a, a couple comments, Mayor. I just want to, to remind you, you were, you were in a tough position two years ago when uh, you were going for the vice mayor spot. And this isn't a favor back and forth, but this is exactly what's in the record. I made sure I went out of my way to reach out to all the citizens of Tarpon Springs, get as many as names as I could, and read every name that supported you out there. And there was probably a couple hundred in which I did that. And so with that said, I will say that you're going to be the one to make the final decision. So, you know, the way I see it, it's, it's all on you at that You point. know, that's the point. <clears throat> that's the point. This isn't a personal thing for you. This is what's best for the city of Tarpon Springs. And I'm calling, I'm saying what I think is the best for Tarpon Springs. I, it's more than one commissioner that's involved in this. I've had lengthy conversations with the attorneys and the city manager concerning this. There's, there's sniping among the commissioners around the community, and all residents are hearing about it. The same residents hear it from one commissioner, they hear it from another commissioner. One commissioner talks to that resident about one commissioner, the other commissioner calls and talks about that commissioner as well. That's got to stop. So this hasn't got to do with, with any individual commissioner. This has got to do with what's best for the city. And two wrongs don't make a right. Um, you know, I get criticized for being too liberal. The former mayor was too criti was criticized for being too too rigid, gaveling people down all the time, not giving them the to the the uh, um, the right to speak. Um, I've heard comments that I allow commissioners to talk too long. They want a time limit for commissioners. Um, I get uh, criticized for uh, allowing. Uh, residents to, to applause, which I don't have a problem with. So one of the purposes of that workshop is to decide what rules we're going to abide by and which ones we're not. And, and that's it, but it's got nothing to do, my decision tonight is, and, and I would hope no commissioner takes it personal <laughs> because it's not personal. I'm gonna be acting in what's best, in my opinion, for the city of Tarpon Springs. I know what all the public records are I know the public records requests that are coming in. I, I know what the issues are gonna be. I know what uh, other matters are uh, occurring within the community and, and basically I've kind of stepped back from that uh, to allow other people to get involved and see if they can calm them down. But right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I feel is best for the city of Tarpon Springs, not any individual. And, um, and, and there's, and, uh, I don't want to say anything more about that. There's big differences between what I was doing as wanting to be um, uh, vice mayor because I thought I could do basically a better job because the other vice mayor wasn't showing up at anything and I was always there. That's the, that's the difference. Vice Mayor Lund is at everything. He volunteers on, on special events. He shows up at all the ribbon cuttings. He's a quiz essential vice mayor. That's all I've got to say about that. So he serves that purpose well. So um, if there's no 
I'm sorry, Commissioner Kuliana, she wanted to say something. I, I want to address um, the two items that got kind of intertwined here in this, this discussion. Um, the rules and procedures say any person making personal, impertinent, or slanderous remarks, um, and if they were standing here, who shall become boisterous while addressing the city commission may be requested to leave the meeting and may forthwith be barred from further attendance at the meeting. So when I'm reading this email, because I just want this clear about this email thing, this email has zero substance in, to it. It's just a rant of name calling, okay? And it, and it's, it, it doesn't meet our rules and procedure. It's um, a, a, a anonymous person, whoever, who puts it, doesn't put their name on it and is a coward and just rants. There's a zero here, okay? So I'm just letting you know, this, this, isn't, a, this isn't about free speech. This thing is serious garbage, okay? Um, and given the rules and procedure, if, that per if that, any person stood up and said the things that are on here, they would be asked to leave, and if they didn't, the chief would get them to go. This is, this is garbage, okay? So that, that being said, I, 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 don't, I believe in free speech. I, I, I believe that, you know, Commissioner Koulias, the, the time that you were spending up here and going uh, into your issues, all had, were issue-based, you backed them up, you didn't just come up here and call people names. You had a, a purpose and a point to what you were doing. Whether I agreed or don't, didn't agree with it, it was substantive. This is not, this is crap, okay? So that's why I didn't, I, I voted no. The, um, as far as the, the, you know, we, the Board of Commissioners, I look at it as, like you would look at a corporation and have a board of directors. Under the board of directors, you have a CEO. The CEO is Mark LaCourse. The board of directors is the five of us. And, you know, board members don't go down on the manufacturing floor and figure out whether or not uh, uh, the cars aren't coming off the assembly line fast enough. They would go to the, uh, you know, that, that's not their job. They set big policy and they let it work through these department heads and obviously through the city manager. So I think that that it has, there are uh, instances where that is not being respected, okay? Um, I hope we can change. I'm 68 years old and I know I change and I know that I know when I'm wrong and I've been wrong on things. I know when I voted wrong and I've felt and had reservations about it um, later. So I can do that and I, I hope that all of us can do that because if you can't, then you, you, there, there is no growth and, and you should be growing until the day you die. Um, so with that, with that said, I see that growth in Commissioner Kulias. I saw him and I know this isn't personal, but again, we have rotated in past. I think he would make it, do an excellent job. I don't know everything he does or has done that would, I don't know. I mean, I just know him. Um, he has grown immensely and I'm really, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be patronizing. I'm proud of him. Um, and you know, I've known, like he said, I've known him since he was a kid. And I saw a guy get up here for a year or two who was really hurt for whatever reason, his family situation, whatever it was, he, he showed, you know, whether you like what he said or not, he had so much courage. Like I used to, man, I was like, God, I don't know if I have that much courage to get up there and go against power. He did it. And then he became a commissioner. We all thought, I know, oh God, he's going to be the bull in the china shop. He's going to be the, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a, a fiasco. And then he, he evolved. He became a, a, this really dignified person. You know, you, yeah, you did some, you might have said some things to Jacob Carr you shouldn't have said, and you said you're sorry. Great, that's growth, right? 
and I'm sorry is cool. So um, I just, I, 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 again, I don't know the things that you know. I know him. I think Commissioner Lunt has done an excellent job, I, and I think the world of Commissioner Lunt. Uh, he's a dignified man, and he represents the city well. But I think Commissioner Kulias can do that as well, and I'm happy to uh, second and, and to vote for him. Can I make a quick statement? Um, I agree with what uh, Commissioner Kulianis said up until a certain point where he made a comparison between corporations. Um, in a corporation, when something doesn't work, yes, you go, you don't go down to find out why the cars aren't being produced. But we're not in a corporation. What we're in is in a city. And in a city, we have residents, and the residents ask you um, to come down many times to see what their situation is. And it is, from what I've ever known, unless that has changed, um, to come down and see at least for yourself and to have that discussion with the city manager, who the city manager is, the day-to-day -day operations that runs it, and as Mark will tell you, as our city manager knows, everybody gives him bits and pieces and he decides what he deals with and what he doesn't. It's very different than a corporation. Um, so I, I didn't, you know, but everything else that you said, I do agree with um, up until that point. Um, it's, it's just very different. And, and, and I know you being here, you'll get to see that you will be getting calls to come look at a lot of things. And believe me, if you want to see people get annoyed, all you have to do is keep saying you don't want to come take a look. Or um, you're going to have to do something because, I mean, you don't have, want to get involved, but you are involved to a certain extent. So unless we have instructions when we sit down where someone says, hey, you, they don't want you to go look at anything. Uh, I, I don't think that's the right way to do it. It's, it's not our place to get involved and make decisions for the city manager. That's his job. But there's nothing wrong. You know, you, we drive around the city and we get to see what uh, happens. I have most, uh, most of the people in this room, when they see me in the street, they have something that they want to share with me. Am I supposed to say, no, 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 I can't listen to you. Um, you've got to bring that up to the city manager. If it is something that I feel the city manager is the only one who can handle, fine. But it is also my job to relay what I hear. A lot of times I get calls from the chief who tells me something that's gone on in the city and his words to me are, you're going to get calls from residents. This way you know what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's just the only thing I wanted to speak about as, as there is a learning process when you're a commissioner it is a whole different idea than when you're not. And with that, I am ready for a motion unless somebody else the wants to. The motion is made the, and seconded. Yes. But let me just say, uh, uh, Commissioner Kulia, I, I hope you know how I feel about you on a personal level. I, mean, I like you. That's not an issue at all. I hope you understand that. Mm -hmm. And as far as the rotation, it would have been Commissioner Eisner's turn next and your turn next year to make to be clear for everybody that's here. That's what was I decided or at least I described uh, last year when I became mayor. Since then, we changed the rules of procedure and it's up to the commission to decide who's the vice mayor. Before that, the mayor had a larger role in making that decision. So I wanna be clear, I've got nothing, um, uh, you know, on a personal level, you're, you're, you're a fine young man, I've always felt that. You know, Tarpon's tough on people. It's tough on my, my children growing up, it's just tough and you've succeeded and you're here representing the town. So that's not the issue. The issue is what I feel is best for the city given what I know with what's coming down the line. And right now, I just would be more comfortable with Vice Mayor Lunt, who I feel as a completely neutral person across the board to continue on as Vice Mayor on a variety of reasons. And I'm hoping once we get past this workshop and maybe a couple of other meetings in that regard and we modify our, our rules of procedure and we add some consistency to one the way i run the meetings and number two 
the way we deal with people in the community and also deal with them up here. Hopefully we'll have a much smoother operating commission. But somebody said that there's, that there's I, I said it in my memorandum, we've got friction amongst ourselves. And I think you've sensed that tonight. So um, I'm gonna ask for, if there's no other I'd like no to make a couple more comments. Go ahead. Well, Mayor, as you stated, you said there's, uh, it's one or more commissioners, and I think that needs to come to light if, if that's the case. Some of your comments that made it, um, I truly believe that they're focused around one individual, and I don't know if you're just trying to create less animosity between that one individual, or you really think you're doing what's right for the city of Tarpon Springs. So I respect you in every manner, but you're one of the most wisest individuals I know. As you said, from your rotation, from the names, and you know, unfortunately, Mike Eisner is not, not ready to be a vice mayor. And we may talk about my year experience. I have a year experience just like Vice Mayor Lunt does. And uh, I've helped push policy that's helped better the citizens, help push city staff. I got specialty pay lined up for our police officers that's gonna help keep them motivated, that's coming up. And uh, I'm always trying to work on with the city manager and uh, push through the proper channels, improve the quality of life in Tarpon Springs on many different avenues. So. The status quo is it's definitely going to be concerning, Mayor, and uh, I'm concerned about you talk about more than one commissioner. Well, that needs to come to light. If it's me, bring it up. If not, then I don't know what we're sitting here protecting. This is for the public to decide and make this decision. Let me just say, and, and you know, I, in fairness to me, I don't hear complaints that probably are made concerning me. You know, I'm, I'm a bully, I run the show, I'm, uh, you know, I have my way, I, I'm, you know, all kinds of things. I'm an authoritarian, I'm a dictator. Uh, I was Caligula when I was city manager, I ran the city, based, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. I don't hear that because, you know, quite frankly, people, that's not something that they share. And I would hope that that would be shared. Obviously, we can't talk as commissioners about that but I would hope somewhere along the line somebody would share those things. And what I'm saying is that the issues that I hear about are more than one, and there's crosstalk among the commission that needs to stop. And I'll talk more about that at the commission meeting, at the workshop. One commissioner calls one resident, that resident you know, calls the other commissioner, and it's not an issue of what's gonna be talked about here tonight. It's more about what each are saying with each other. And that's got to stop and we need to start acting like as, as a board, a policy board from my perspective. And you know, again, I'm just one vote. I'm one of five, five votes, I've already said that. My authority in the charter is just two sentences more than what a commissioner's are. That I'm, as a matter of fact, in the old days, this thing used to say mayor commissioner, not mayor, mayor commissioner. That sign over there that said vice mayor said mayor pro temp, the temporary mayor. It wasn't this prestigious vice mayor and we run around town calling ourselves vice mayor and stuff like that. And, and, and in fairness to the residents as well, when they hear mayor, they're accustomed to some mayor up in New York that's got a lot of authority. Down here, I don't have that authority. They ask me to do things I can't do that. I tell them, I'm just one vote. They kind of stare at me like, well, you're the mayor. I said, no, I am mayor, but that's not the way it works in this town. I'm always clear about that. And so I want us to work as a, as a five member board. Each person's vote counts the same. And, and yes, it's more than one commissioner. And I'm hoping <laughs> that we can get through a workshop and kind of talk about that a little more, not point fingers at each other but to gain some understanding. And again, I'm gonna repeat this again. There's some people out in this community that just love controversy. They will actually perpetuate it to make this commission look bad for whatever reason. It's just that's what they like to do. They'll drop the dime to the St. Pete Times or Tampa Bay Times with things that may not even be completely true in your windows, but then that starts the calls. And that's okay, that's transparency. That, that's not an issue, as long as the information that's being perpetuated and communicated is factual. And that's where I, I think there, there's some issues, because a lot of things that are said are not necessarily, um, in, 
and I can't cooperate. You know, when a person calls me and says what one commissioner says and, and that I sh they, they're offended by it, I don't know whether that's true or not. All I'm saying is the way to do that is don't go talk to that person. That's what I'm trying to say. Don't, you know, don't call that person and, and, and get into a discussion because then they turn that around and basically say, well, so-and-so called me and this is what he said. I'm offended and I, I don't care for that. Okay, well, you know, we'll try and I'll share that with the city attorneys. They talk to the commissioners and we still have the same issue. So I, 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 I don't want to keep dwelling on this thing, but this matter tonight is not a personal issue with anybody. Um, I don't have a personal issue with any of the commissioners. Can I call the question? That's fine. Roll call. Commissioner Koulianis. I forgot, what's the motion? <laughs> Commissioner Koulianis. Uh, it's for Commissioner Koulianis. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Koulianis. Yes. Commissioner Eisner. No. Vice Mayor Lunt. No. Mayor Vatikiotis. No. Is there another motion in a second? Motion to make um, Vice Mayor Lunt the uh, continuous Vice Mayor again. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? I think this is the status quo. It's a Saturday in Tarpon Springs than when that's fine. You decided to, you weren't going to get it, and that's okay. I see that some people see someone who's reinvigorated, who's got the energy, who's got the will to want to speak up for the citizens of Tarpon Springs, and I understand there might be some envy in that, but I'll never fight fighting, I'll never stop fighting for the citizens of Tarpon Springs. My job is to push policy that makes sense for all the residents, and that's why I fight for the little things, and we try to accomplish them every day, and so this status quo is not gonna happen moving forward. A lot of things gonna be addressed. We're all gonna have to speak our individual minds and we're all have to come together with those individual minds to make a difference in our community. So I have no further comments. Can there I any make a comment here? Go ahead. So I've been quiet through all this. Um, when I ran for commissioner for the city of Tarpon Springs, I ran because I cared for the city. I saw that it needed some some tender loving care, some diligence in certain areas. Um, and so I ran on that, you know, responsibility for what the city looks like, how it treats its people, how it treats its developers, what it does with the, the land that we have left. That's always been my concern. I didn't run for vice mayor. I didn't even realize that that would even happen. Um, it just happened the first meeting we had. So one of the things you need to realize is there's five of us up here. We all have a vote. We all have concerns. We all pay attention to different things that we're kind of interested in about the city. It's not a popularity contest once you're up here. It's not, oh, I've, I say this, I'll please the most people. Because sometimes you don't please the most city. But damn, you try to do what's best for the city not to win a popularity contest. It's not that because you're vice mayor, you get to push more things. You don't get to push more things. I still make suggestions to the city manager almost on a daily basis, but my things that I push on are better lighting for things, better pedestrian crosswalks, signage, lighting, improving the visual look of our town, better infrastructure so that we can have our city buildings attended to, that sort of stuff. To make the city infrastructure and, and overall purpose of the city better for this city. So when I go out into the, into the public, I'm not, I don't know 5,000 people out of 25,000 people in this town. I don't talk to 5,000 people. I talk to the people that talk to me. I talk to the people that are concerned about some of the things that I'm concerned about. When I attend county meetings on the regional planning stuff, I do that to further Tarpon Springs um, position within the county as, as far as what people think of. 
I mean, if I hadn't done that, we wouldn't have got anywhere near close to being on forward for Nellis. We got seven votes out of five, or seven to five vote, or 75 against us on that, we would have got maybe one or two. But the fact is I made a point of it. When I went to county things, I tried to introduce people more to Tarpon Springs, get them to familiar with us. So this is what you do as a, as a vice mayor. It's not a popularity contest. It's not like you get more choice. I mean, yeah, when you're doing board appointments, they always come to you first, but that's the part of my job I've always hated. I hate being first. I want to hear whatever the people have to say. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So it's not, this is not a popular popularity contest for me at all. It's simply a matter that we need solid representation inside and outside Tarpon Springs. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Like I said, this, uh, this representation thing, you know, I work just as hard as those other people, so I'm, I'm done fighting for myself. I can see that there's some uh, other ulterior motives for either protection or status quo or scared about what's going to happen here in the near future, and uh, it's disappointing. So You know, I don't think those are fair comments, Commissioner Kulias, but it's you said Saturday them, in and words Springs. said can't be unsaid, so I understand that. If there's no other comments, yeah, public I, comment, I, I, I've I got to go to public comments. Commissioner Eisner, I don't want to get okay. into an argument. No, I just, I just don't know where he's coming from it's, on this. It it's, doesn't it's matter. Negative. It doesn't. He said it. it just Thank leave you. Commissioner Kudia as on his own. He's fine. Thank you. Are there any public comments? Are there any public comments on this item? Mr. Jump, are there any public comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay, thank you. If there's no further commission comments, roll call, please. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? No. Commissioner Eisner? I want to have another, being so much was spoken about, which way are we voting? We're voting now for uh, Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Okay, we have a name to put in the resolution, Mr. Salzman. Yes. If you can read the resolution by title, please. Resolution 2023-15, the resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, appointing Commissioner Lunt as Vice Mayor of the City of Tarpon Springs and providing for an effective date hereof. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any public comments concerning this item? Public comments. Mr. Jump, are there any public comments? If anyone online would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand and you'll be allowed in to talk. And we do not have any raised hands at this time. Okay. Are there any commission comments? Are there any commission comments? May I have a motion and a second, please? Did we have a motion? Yes. We did not have a motion in a second yet, right? Yes, we That's did. That's correct. We did. Yeah, okay. we did. Roll call. We did not have a motion. We did not have a motion. Motion That's resolution. what I'm asking for is a motion and a second. A, a motion to approve the resolution and a second. Motion to approve resolution. I don't have the resolution number. 2023-15. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Koulianis? Yes. Commissioner Koulias? No. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Vice Mayor Lunt? Yes. Mayor Vatikiotis? Yes. Um, okay, That now we go to board and staff comments. Um, please, Chief Young. Uh, no further comments. Thank you. <laughs> Attorney Salzman. Yes, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, I would request another shade meeting um, to follow up on what our last shade meeting was about. Uh, it shouldn't be a real long meeting. I want to update the commission and uh, also get some direction. Uh, it's on the concerned citizens case, and I would ask if it's possible to do it before our next scheduled meeting 
Uh, it should not take more than a half hour, but I would ask for the hour before. Thank you. Um, uh, 6 p.m., would we convene at 6 p.m.? Would that be early enough? We could do 6, that's fine. 6. Uh, do you want it earlier? 5.30 would be better just because everybody moves back and forth. And okay. Um, would everybody be able to meet at 5.30 on April 25th, which is our next commission meeting? Instead of being here at 6.30, we would convene upstairs at 5.30, and then at the adjournment of that meeting, we would come down here for our regular session. You're okay with that? Sure. Commissioner Lund. Sure. Commissioner Kuyas? Sure. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Eisner? Okay, we're good. Thank so you. So we don't need any motion or anything like no. that? No. We, we will set it up. That. Okay. Um, all right. So no, major report. <laughs> sure, you don't want to jump in on this. Not a not not a word. Ms. Jacobs. I have no comments. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Lund. No comments. Who's next senior now? Commissioner Eisner. Up next. <laughs> yes. Uh, no comment. Commissioner Kuyas. Yes, I have comments and I have some documents I want to pass out. Make sure every commissioner gets a copy of these documents, as well as the city attorney. Did you get a copy? I want to make sure there's enough on here. Dear board, I understand this is a ceremonial meeting, but it's also a meeting to set the tone for the new year and state of the Board of Commissioners in Tarpon Springs. There's a different feeling and viewpoint when you sit in the audience during a BOC meeting than the feeling and viewpoint you have when you're behind the dais. There's also a different feeling and viewpoint when you watch a meeting from home, as I did the last regular session meeting. I had to miss the last meeting due to my emergency appendectomy, and watching the meeting from, at, from home was one of the most frustrating and painful experiences I had to deal with. I have never been more disappointed and embarrassed for this past year's commission than the last meeting. The handling of Harry Patsalidis' code enforcement case was an embarrassment. Mr. Mike Eisner, your actions, attitude, and questioning of Mr. Batsalidis was appalling, disgusting, and flat out disrespectful. While I was at church last week, I received more negative comments on your actions and treatment of Mr. Batsalidis than healing wishes for my recovery. I am also asking for the immediate resignation from Linda Eisner from the Code Enforcement Board for the conflict of interest it is with Mr. Eisner on the Board of Commissioners. There was a moment when you, Mr. Eisner, asked Mr. Pazalidis a question, and as, and as he was answering it, you mumbled under your breath for the microphone to pick up, you're killing me. How rude and disrespectful. That has been the case the last several months with business owners and property owners in the community. It was obvious to me you were jealous of the amount of property Mr. Patsalidis had acquired. You acknowledged Commissioner Carr, uh, Commissioner Carr had the same backup, but you quote, unquote statement, he didn't have the facts. Well, let me tell you and the rest of this board who Mr. Harry Patsalidis is. Mr. Patsalidis has served in the Treasury Department as a criminal investigator special agent in which he spent 12 years in the IRS working tax fraud, organized crime, and high-level drug traffickers. He also worked for the Office of the Inspector General. He has over 30 years of experience working for the federal government as a supervisor criminal investigator. He is 22 years sworn as a law enforcement officer here in the state of Florida. 
He currently works as an investigator for the Sixth Judicial Court Circuit District Attorney <coughs> right here in Pinellas County. He has over 50 years of service to law enforcement on the federal and state level, and he has never received one complaint on his record or his personnel file. That's something I want you guys to remember as other issues are gonna come up. That is who Mr. Harry Pazelidis is. To see you, Mr. Eisner, give this noble man a lecture, advice on property management, and act as a life coach to this man was embarrassing. You owe the Greek community of Tarpon Springs an apology, and you owe Mr. Pazelidis an apology. You sat back, slouched in your chair as if you were bigger than the position you hold. You asked for a dress code of policy to criticize Commissioner Carr while wearing flashing Christmas lights. And I thought it was embarrassing. I am asking for a no slouch policy in our seats. We as elected officials should sit upright, hands on the table, and respect the speakers that come before us. They deserve it. This past year, I have never, not once, seen the mayor's shoulder blades touch the back of his chair. Let's follow his example. You know, Tarponites, we as elected officials, we wear these cool name plates, we're invited to all these local events, and we think we are somebodies. We personally don't get invited, but rather the, pos the positions we hold in public office are invited, and at times, the position gets to Mr. Eisner's head. We on this board are nobodies. I am a nobody. Mr. Eisner, you are a nobody. Mayor, I watched Mr. Eisner be, disrespect be disrespectful to Commissioner Carr for a whole year, dropping city documents on his desk, backhand comments and jabs week after week on agenda items, and I wish I would have spoken up sooner. Mayor, this past year of accompli accomplishments have been overshadowed by the character and Northeastern unprofessional personality of Mr. Eisner. This is Tarpon Springs, and your Northeastern attitude and policy doesn't work here in Tarpon Springs, nor is it a good fit. Mayor, Mr. Eisner doesn't listen to the advice you give all of us board members. When you told us after a heated agenda item and applications, we should not contact the individuals involved right away to give time to cool and your quote, let it go. Mr. Eisner cannot let it go. After the co-hatch, Mr. Eisner took it upon himself to bother and investigate matters and created, a more, and created more division between the downtown business property owners and this commission. The downtown merchants have now used a noun to describe his actions that day and coined it the victory lap. As some of those merchants stated, he confessed to stating he was doing his victory lap. He also stated to a downtown merchant, you will be kissing my hand with the commerce that Cohatch brings you. But that wasn't the only time Mr. Eisner couldn't let it go. Provided to you all is a police incident report dated March 29th, 2023 at 1.37 a.m. The complainant called the police in fear as he received a text message from Mr. Eisner. And the words that would scare any senior citizen, especially receiving them so late in the night. The, pol the police report states that the text from Mr. Eisner stated, I see your apology was without meaning. You meant what you did. I am not blind. I stuck my neck out for your son, and he burned also. Carry on. The police report also talks about some hearsay speculation that I won't get into, but it's quite disturbing to hear. Mayor, these actions are egregious, and I know you agree, but now you don't know how to address this situation, nor have you addressed it this past year. Another example of how Mr. Eisner cannot let it go. This is not behavior of an elected official, but rather the behavior of a self-fulfilling henchman, or even worse, a Russian Bolshevik communist. This man cannot continue to show up at people's front doors or confront them in a harassing manner just because they don't agree with him. 
When a resident brought up the flag display with inappropriate language on Florida Avenue, Mr. Eisner was at the door before our city staff was the next day. Mayor, time and time again, Mr. Eisner doesn't listen to your advice or wisdom and is constantly breaking the chain of command. He intentionally thrusts himself into a position he shouldn't as our roles in government and the chain of command are as elected officials. Another time he couldn't let it go is during the reconsideration of the Cohatch application. A letter was read into the record from St. Nicholas Cathedral about their wanting to cancel the parking lot agreement. Well, the following day, I received a text message from the parish council president that Mr. Eisner reached out to a board member and voiced his frustration with the letter. From what I understand, there will be a follow-up letter soon from the parish council regarding the parking lot. This is not behavior fitting of an elected official of this most historic city of Tarpon Springs. Mayor, I ran for office to allow more people than ever, residents, business owners, and property owners, the right and comfort to speak their minds at the podium without any harassment or retribution. I ran to bridge the gap in all parts of the community and not have Mr. Eisner build walls and barriers that have rubbed their feelings towards him to us on this board. This is the final thing I wanna discuss, this instant messenger threat from Linda Eisner. About a month ago, there was a public records request asking for messages from all commissioners to and from Mike and Linda Eisner. Well, after the last meeting, I find it ironic, minutes after the meeting was over, I received a message from Linda, if it was her, that stated, how are you feeling tonight? I responded, with all due respect, trying to reach out to me after a commission meeting is inappropriate. Stop texting and reaching out to me. I then followed up with a memorandum in which I stated I do not want to receive any messages of any kind from the commissioner's spouses moving forward. More importantly, was an instant messaging threat I received on July 27th, 2022 days after Mr. Eisner confronted Mr. Trask about the travel time fees. Weeks later, Honorable Mr. Trask resigned. As you can see in this thread, Linda, if it is Linda, is frustrated I didn't go along with the firing of Trask. So I messed with her stating multiple times why she isn't frustrated with the mayor or the vice mayor for the positions they took. It went back and forth until she made a statement that made her a conduit to a potential future board decision. And the statement is valid reasons, question mark, reread above. There are temporary attorneys ready to take over day one, up to speed until a permanent one can be hired. No loss of time. You can choose to be passive, boo hoo. Why am I singling you out? because you were the loudest outspoken hero at the podium. That's my valid, undisputable reason. When given the chance to act on your own wishes, you didn't. Why? Followed up with another comment. I voted for you. I think you were a fabulous candidate. I don't understand the change. What's the big picture have to do with last <coughs> night? And I responded, there's a big picture. You may not see it. Thank you and good night. So I have to ask Mr. Eisner, who is your wife referring to as attorneys ready in line, ready to take up? Is it anyone that's here today that you had spoken to prior to the, the request for proposal being issued? She's right there, why don't you ask her? She said we. Can you, Commissioner Kulia cannot ask uh, anyone in the audience. She, she was referring to we, so as long as she's referring to we, and the mayor, or we and the vice mayor, or we and Commissioner Carr, I can't help but think that she's referring to we, me and Commissioner Eisner. Well, let me ask you, answer this. Hang, hang on a second, are, are, you, are, are you done? Or? No, I'm, I'm gonna, you know. You're not done? Mr. Salzman, this could be you having discussion with Mr. Eisner prior to the request for proposal process. We need to know. If so, Mr. Eisner, you have, selfish, you have selfishly put Mr. Salzman in a bad spot and compromised our request for proposal process. Mayor, 
I am simply not going to allow this man to disrespect our residents, property owners, business owners, and city staff anymore at future meetings. If you aren't willing to gavel him down, then I will speak up. I personally think he should resign immediately. He doesn't have the temperament or professional ability to handle tough applications and frustrated residents. Mayor, we all know something is coming down soon. Mr. Trask and his attorney law, they are coming down and they are coming hard. And I have a feeling Mr. Eisner will try to drag you down with him, holding on your ankles with both hands. We understand this nature, pedigree, and who he can be at times. But we won't let it happen, Mayor. The residents have your back, this commission has your back, and city staff has your back. You know, I ran one of the hardest campaigns, and I will go on a limb as I worked the hardest during that election. Not to have it compromised from a wife who wanted to be a conduit on one of the most important issues in, in, in our staff. So this past year's accomplishments have been overshadowed by the personality and character traits of Mr. Mike Eisner. All of our so-called enemies, the ones that opposed us, we've gotten back tenfold. We've changed land use codes. We've reversed policies that make uh, developments harder in which those kinds were to be presented. But other than that, we've gotten back. We fought for the residents. There, there's no more, there shouldn't be any more animosity from opposing people on topics moving forward. This past year, the mayor has been able to push policy in which he wanted to, and it was great for our community. But there's only so much policy the mayor's gonna have left to push. It's up to this board, and that's why I challenge this board to be creative, to come up with policy and something we can look forward to. The mayor's done a lot. He's, he should be recognized for that, and so it's up to us to start pushing policy to work with city staff. And Mayor, I want to hear your wisdom to address this behavior and see what direction we as a board should take in addressing him. Because I'm simply not going to allow the disrespect to the residents in the community that I've witnessed these past several months, and if not the whole year. So I'm going to stop right now and wait for any rebuttals. Um. I you read that last paragraph. I think you were asking me a question, right? About what to do about it or something like that. Huh? Mayor, I am awaiting your wisdom to address this behavior and see what direction we as a board should take in addressing him. I believe it's important that he may resign before this stuff gets out of hand. We know what's coming. We know he's going to try to bring down everybody. And for the sake and well-being of Tarpon Springs, there's only so many options we have moving forward. And I need you to understand that, Mayor. Let me, let me just ask you, maybe this would help. Um, have you spoken to uh, Attorney Salzman or Commissioner Kardash about the stuff that you just read, especially the last part, the last paragraph? Uh, in regards to which what, what you're opinion? asking as far as what can be done and that sort of thing no I have not asked for them and I I'd wanted to wait during a public meeting like this where it should be out in the open for everyone to see and hear as it should be I, I don't want to work behind the scenes right now with any city attorneys until we get this out here to see what's going to happen well it's sometimes a necessary evil that you've got to work with somebody in an office environment to understand what can and cannot be done. Um, if you want to deal with this publicly, then I suggest you get with the city manager and, and ask an item to be agended and perhaps work with the attorneys to figure out how you can structure this sort of an agenda item to bring it forward. Um, that's what I would do. But I also have spent a lot of time with the attorneys trying to figure out what can we do given the circumstances, uh, not, not the details that you get into with an individual, but the type of communications that have been occurring that create a lot of controversy in the community. And that is what the purpose of the workshop is for. If you wanna do something before the workshop or at least in parallel with it, 
all I can, whether you, you <laughs> I'm not sure how to do it publicly with the attorneys, but I think maybe meeting with them as I've done uh, personally and by telephone um, to get an idea of what can and can't be done. I mean, I've been doing that. Sure. Well, what I would say is uh, we can first start off with, we can give uh, Mr. Eisner two weeks now to decide what attorney that he and his wife were referring to. I believe he, she was, uh, he was using her as a conduit. I also have speculation he has her account on, her, on his Facebook, on his phone, and was able to do stuff like that. So it's disappointing, Mayor, because I don't think his wife reached out to you, the vice mayor, or anyone else for disappointment on how I wanted to handle that situation with Mr. Trask. And so it's quite concerning that I worked hard, worked harder than everybody else. You guys know it. I faced a lot of uphill battles. I had to do what I had to do, but not to be compromised from the spouse as a conduit. It's not right. If, if you know, my, my back's always had a bullseye on it, and this has escalated it more. But I'm not going to wait right now to hear back from those attorneys, from Trask and Lama, whatever the reactions are, and with Hillward Henderson, this needs to be addressed now in an efficient manner. And if our, ev uh, and if our request for proposal process has been compromised, we need to take some serious action. I, I, I don't have an answer um, for you because I, um, I understand the information that you've presented. I'm aware of it, although not actually seeing it. This is one of the reasons of talking tonight. Mm -hmm. There's other stuff as well, um, not necessarily involving, um, um, uh, you know, Commissioner Eisner and Mrs. Eisner. Um, and that's why I'm concerned, and that's why I felt that we just needed to maintain the status quo, have the workshop, and move ahead. This is a very public way of addressing some of the issues that we would be talking about at the workshop anyway. I, I think if you, if you want to initiate something um, concerning uh, the, the, the uh, uh, allegations, I guess, if you will, um, that you're uh, pointing towards um, Commissioner Eisner, I think the first step is you need to talk to the attorneys. That's what they're for. Sure. I, I can't tell you, and I know, I suspect I know what Mr. Salzman would tell me, and I would suspect I know what Ms. Kardash would tell me. But that is something for you as the commissioner to, um, you, you made it very public in a very public way this evening. And, um, and, and I think the next step is if you want to take this further, you have to have that conversation with the uh, attorneys. Um, I mean, I don't know that we're gonna schedule an agenda item to kind of discuss this item of how we would move forward with the attorneys um, unless that's what you want to do. I, I just think that would be a very awkward way to do it and an inefficient way of doing it, maybe a very public way of doing it, but they may be able to answer your questions in, in, in I don't know, in a short period of time, whereas we would wind up spending several hours publicly dealing with this stuff. And again, <laughs> it doesn't help the residents we're not doing, we're not contributing anything that the residents want us to do to help them make their lives better, make Tarpon Springs better. We're, we're arguing amongst ourselves, and that's what I meant. I'm aware there's friction among us. I know that, and that's why I think we just need some stability right now. So um, I, I don't know if that helps or answers your question, but I, I would, let me just say definitively, I would think you need to discuss um, this with Ms. Ms. Kardash or um, Mr. Salzman. Um, they gave us in their contract, in that resolution, I think, basically what their responsibilities are in the various municipal areas. So I would say look at that and figure out what, who's going to cover this and then give them a call and talk to them. Sure, but I would like to hear from Mr. Eisner tonight about who this attorney was or who they had in plan in mind if, that was ready if, to take if over. He, if and he, I think the citizens of Tarpon Springs deserve that right, city staff deserves that right, and the board of commissioners deserve that if, right. If he cares to do that, Commissioner Kulia, so it's up to you. Well, we came here for a celebratory thing. I understand. And um, 
I don't know why I would have um, a fellow commissioner try to muddy the water as he did, but you know. You, you can leave it at that. I, I'm going to leave it at that. I just want to say a couple of things. I've had a conversation uh, with Tracy McManus, who's sitting here, and I explained my points. A lot of what your comments that you've made are outright lies. Um, they're not truths. Um, and as long as you want to believe that, that's okay by me. I, I didn't really come here prepared to go verbatim on each and every one of the mistruths that you've said. Um, because that wasn't my purpose. My purpose was to be, to come here and to bring in two fellow commissioners. I've had differences with every commissioner and we shake hands and move forward. Um, you know, you didn't share that while you were in the hospital that I visited you on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You visited me Hold three on. too many L times, I'm, I'm speaking now, I'm, I'm speaking now. So on the next day, while I did not want to come to you, my wife was kind enough to say, hey, how are you feeling? That was on her own doing. You're not married. You don't have a wife. My wife, as everybody in this whole town knows, she does what she wants to do. So your accusation that I have control over her phone, I don't have control over her phone, I don't have control over her wallet, I don't have control over her purse, my wife is, my, is her own person, so if you're making accusations at someone who cares about you, feel free. She'll defend herself. I find it disgusting that you were to attack her because she is probably one of the hardest persons that work in this town for free, okay? She doesn't have attorneys and friends like you do. So, I don't know where you're coming off with this, all these accusations. Um, just on a couple of things that I just want to touch base with you to put you straight. There was a person that I spoke to in the church who's a good close friend of mine. We're like this. And I was looking out for the church. I wasn't looking out for anyone, <clears throat> anything else. And we were in a conversation. And the conversation that was being made had nothing to, I, there was no threat made like you make a comment. There was no anything. I, it was a conversation. We were talking about many things. So, you know, there's been lots of different lies that have been out there to try to ugly the water for me. And what I do is I just let it roll off and let it just happen. I can't stop that. I didn't go on a victory lap. I didn't ask anyone to kiss my ring or any of the other comments that have been made, okay? The comment that I made that was misconstrued was that Kohatch coming in met our criteria and that's why they were approved. And hopefully they will raise the tide for everybody here. If you want to take that comment and make it into I'm having people kiss my ring, then you go right ahead. But that's what I said, and then everything else was changed. You ever play the game telephone? You know what I learned about this whole thing? I will not talk to people, because guess what? What I say out of the goodness of my heart gets misconstrued. And I don't like that you repeated what another one of your fellow people wrote but didn't get to read tonight. Because it seems there's a group of you that get together that want to do this. And all you're doing is causing havoc amongst us. This doesn't build goodwill and better friendship. So I don't understand why you would even dare to bring this up. We could have easily discussed this on our own, but you decided let's bring this all up. I didn't want, it's still me to talk. I didn't want to bring up the situation I had with John or with Tom or with anybody else that was here. I figured this was their night and I was gracious enough to step aside because I see this issue and say that Craig should stay on 
as the vice mayor. I don't have an ego to fill. I'm doing this for the love of the town. You were the one that attacked me that I was pushing Jackie Turner as, 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 the, as the guy. You're smiling now. You called me a liar to my face. That's you fire. I'm still it's... speaking. I have the go floor. Ahead. So there's lots of things you did that I just let go over because I don't, I don't get into this kind of nonsense. I don't get into that. But there are comments that are made, and when somebody makes a comment that is not what I said, I ignore them. I walk away and say, okay, I can't talk to them anymore. My wife was with me when I made those comments because I knew they would be misconstrued. I was trying to be kind. I'm an informative guy. I always have been. And when I'm informative, sometimes people take things out of context. I can't help that. But you know how I can't help it? I won't speak. But what, what my wife writes, she watches it on TV. And she's, she, if she's texting you, I have no control over that. As far as her board, we've spoken. It was, it was our, our last attorney who allowed her to be on the board. She was the only one who applied, and we all voted it. Now, we both made the decision she should step away from it and let the city get somebody else because we don't want to have that, that distrust. But I don't have the relationship with Harry Pastelitis. I'm neutral. I'm Switzerland. So when Harry comes before me, I don't really need to know, and I don't take this away from you, Harry, in any disrespect, his past. I have to deal with the evidence that he's presented to me. And he's been before the, before the Code Enforcement Board and was rejected. He was before the courts and was rejected, and then gave us a great deal of information to go over. And I went respectfully through every bit that he gave me. And any time he brought up a topic that he spoke about, I asked the question, this is my job. I didn't relitigate it, he relitigated it. He could have just stood up in front of us and said, I owe $30,000, the attorney offered me 15, I won five, what is, it, what is the number that you guys would have? And what could have been over? But he asked questions. I thought I was respectful of answering it. You may not have liked it. Now, I do realize the one negative I have here is I didn't grow up in this town. So his attorney isn't my attorney. Is he your attorney? Absolutely. Thank you. So there's a whole lot of behind-the-scenes attorney uh, he does my taxes, this guy's the guy that rode my bicycle. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on that I'm not privy to. So, you know, I, I watched all, the, all of the meeting that went on at the last meeting, all the whispering back between certain people on how they were going to try to pin this and make this look bad for me. It's, it's not. I, I try to do the best I can with what's been presented to me. I don't always agree with you. I don't always disagree with you. But this, what you just brought out, is despicable behavior. Because you know what? If you had an issue with any of this, there's no sunshine law. You could say to, to my wife, I don't want any more emails. You finally did that. Why didn't you do that in the beginning? I didn't even know. She doesn't sit there in the morning and say, look what I sent over to Coolius. You're making accusations like that we sit there and talk over every one of your text messages. So I, I, I wrote a whole thing to combat this, but I left it home because you know what? I didn't want to bring this up. But when I'm attacked like you're attacking me, that's just, that's just horrible. That's not what a commissioner should do to another commissioner. It's our job to protect the residents of Tarpon Springs. I was not going to allow another meeting in which residents were mistreated, Are you done? applicants were mistreated, and it's not a personal attack. This is a professional attack 
on your unprofessional behavior right. as an elected official in the most historic city of Tarpon Springs. Were you there to hear wait. anything out of sight? Wait, 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 okay. These are words. Last, last call, uh, Commissioner Crudeo. I'm looking to find the answers on who the attorney was that Mr. Eisner or Linda thought that we already had one in place prior to our RFP going out. Okay. And that's the answer we need to find out. Then, then as I mentioned, get with the attorneys, get with Mrs. Uh, Kardash, if you think Mr. Salzman's involved, and discuss it with her as far as how to move forward with that. I, I don't have another answer. Do you have another answer for him, seeing Andrew LaCours? I don't want to get you involved, but you've been here a long time too, so, okay. Um, Mr. Salzman, do you have another suggestion on that? No, I mean, that's, if there's some accusation being made against me, your, the answer is no. Regina and I were selected separately to do to help you all out when your city attorney resigned. The RFPs go out, the RFP, we were already here. So I don't know what you're talking about with the RFP. Both of us, I put in for an RFP, you turned me down. You picked me as litigation lawyer, I said fine. You then had no one else wanted the position, so I thought maybe it would be helpful for the city if Regina and I did it together. That's the extent of the RFP. If you're accusing me of something unethical, then I have a problem, because that's not true. And as you pointed out, anybody's reputation or ethics is very important. I've done nothing unethical. Absolutely, and I haven't stated you have, and, but. And let me just say this, Commissioner. I've tried to be as helpful for every, with you or anybody, all the commission. I think I treat everybody the same, but certainly I've done nothing wrong, so. I'm not behind the scenes with anybody. The last thing I want to do is that. In fact, I've had many conversations with the city manager before I put in for the RFP to see. Well, I'd like to help people out. Same thing I did in Bel Air Beach. I'm willing to help you out. That's what I thought I was doing. Yeah, and I'm not saying you didn't, but I just want to make sure you weren't put in a tough spot Wait, and, and that the integrity of RFP was was it compromised? It w not by me or Regina, I can honestly tell you that. Sure. I mean, that, that's absolutely, there's not even a question. I'm at, and I'm happy to discuss anything with you. Sure, so at that point, we need to find out who the attorney was that Ms. Linda Eisner and we, being Commissioner Eisner, was referring to that was ready in place I, to go. I, I suggest you just talk it over with them to get a, a feel for the germaneness, the relevance of, of that question, and, and as far as how it works into the city government, that's all I'm saying. I don't have an answer for you, and, and, and uh, you, I, you can. Can I say the, something? The only thing I want to also ask your, your last yeah. word. Okay, I'll be the last word. Go ahead. No, no, hang on, Commissioner Kruyanis. Your Your last word on this matter. If you have anything that I have done illegal or unethical, I want that to be in writing to me and not just hearsay that you heard because I'm not interested in telephone talk. So if you wanna make a, that, that's not unethical behavior. Okay, that is, is that it? Yes. Okay, that gets back to getting with a city attorney and, and Mayor, figuring all that out I'll, and responding to Commissioner Eisner. Commissioner Kulianis, welcome yeah. to the commission. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually thought it was going to be like a nice, easy, get some stuff, get some <laughs> swag and go home, you know. But, um, you know, you know, uh, you just better check to make sure you still have your gifts before you leave. <laughs> you know, um, I, I here's you know, I, Mayor. Again, we've known each other a long time. We had thousands of hours of conversation prior to me being under sunshine. Right. Um, I know what you want to do for this town. And I, that's why I got on board, because I wanted, to, I, I believed in your vision, I believe in you. Um, I, uh, 
And I was hoping that, you know, you had an idea that we have a workshop and we try to recalibrate and we, you know, a new board has come in and maybe we can reset this thing so we can move on. Yeah, I agree. Mr. Eisner's personality has, is bigger than life and it's, and, and, and the things that, the, the thing that concerns me the most about what happened tonight is you saying you're 68 years old and can't change. I don't believe it. I think that's part of your bluster, but, um, and I hope it's part of your bluster because okay. I hope you can change. And I hope that we can, tr what's gonna happen with attorney Trask and, and if, there's, if there's issues and if that's the sunshine and, and that becomes part of the thing, you're gonna have to deal with it. Correct. And the cities will have to deal with it. Um, but that's not us to deal with no. at this point. So I think what I'm hoping is that we can go to this workshop and I understand all of his frustrations and I share them because some of this stuff was about me too and my brother and I didn't like it, but that's you. But I'm willing to, let's put it aside. I don't need you to constantly, I mean, you're always good at coming back with, you know, deflections and my wife is the, you know, does the most of anybody in the town and I could say my wife does more than anybody in the town and we go on and on and on and on. Okay, but we have a shot. We have a shot to start fresh. This is a new board. I know it's just one guy, but I know, you know, I'm not Jacob Carr um, and, you know, I don't expect that the stuff is gonna be on me that was on Jacob and that we can go forward, have that workshop, come with an open mind that you can change some things because you need to, I need to, everyone needs to, okay? And maybe, maybe we can move on. That's what I'm hoping for. Well, I've mentioned workshop numerous times this evening Let's do and it. maybe it'll sink in that that's what we need to go through to hash this stuff out. Let's do so, it. So, okay. I agree. Um, that was Commissioner Kulia. Okay. Um, and Mayor, okay. I do want to follow up. You need to hold that gavel a little bit more firm with Mr. Eisner. You've let him take over the commission meetings at times, and I need <laughs> you to hold that gavel stronger. Can we talk about that at the workshop? No, it needs to come out now. <laughs> I said that earlier as well. Sure. And, and if you remember, I, I basically said it's not, you know, I'm being told one thing and I see another thing and we need to have consistency. And I have no issue using this or not using it. It's just we've got rules that we need to work, operate by and I need some guidance from the commission. I'm just one guy up here. I need guidance from you other four. So, um, the, old, the other thing I wanted to, uh, we got the shade meeting at um, 530. City manager, of course, will handle the announcement on it. Um, we've got a forward Pinellas meeting um, tomorrow uh, concerning our reconsideration for our seat. The, um, the meeting adjourns at four and we're the last <coughs> on the agenda as an informational item with a subtitle correspondence of interest. So I'm not sure how serious the forward Pinellas people are going to, the, that council is gonna be considering us. And I, I know Commissioner Kulias, you're planning on going, is that I'm right? gonna be there fighting hard. We only got one shot in the next 10 years. I encourage all of us to be there, regardless of what happened tonight. I'm quick to roll over and forget about it, but we all gotta be there to try to fight to get okay. our own seat at the table. And, this is and, very important to us. Okay. And Commissioner Eisner, you said that you had spoken to um, Jared Buckman. Jared, uh, Commissioner Buckman from Correct. Osmar. He's our representative uh, of our Osmar. And uh, did he have any other information to share? Yes, he recommended that we possibly should not pursue this. And his comment for not pursuing it is because it's still, even if we were to get in, we get the seat within um, three years any which way and that it may go into a regional um, stipulation that we would all lose our seats. So his, his saying is 
you know, if you want to come there and, you know, be there and, and push for this, he doesn't see that anything is going to change. He feels that uh, we'd all be wasting our time, but I mean, he, you're free. No, no, everybody, I, yeah, everybody's free to do it. Um, but he just feels that it's, it's, we're going to get our seat anyway, and then it'll probably be taken away because it'll go regional. And then when it goes regional, they have all different, you know, um, county commissioners. So right. that was his comment on it. So well, the, can I comment on this? Sure. Yes, on, please. On the regionality. This was a, a thing that cropped up like 60 days ago. It's not even out of the gestation period. It's being lightly talked about. I don't believe, from my information, anyway, that it's something that's going to happen within the next two, or maybe three years, or maybe longer. Um, these kind of metropolitan planning organizations where they're multi-metropolitan, which is what they're looking at, are really, really hard to cobble together. So my opinion is... Hey, hey. Ms. Koulianis, yeah. thank you for being here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. I'm sorry. I, I was about to say is if we think we have a shot at a seat on this board, we should take that shot. Regardless of whether we're going to end up, even if we end up with a seat on the board next year for three years, we're still going to be representing Oldsmar and Safety Harbor. That's just not proper representation. Yeah. They need to treat us better than that. There I agree with you, but he's just feeling, oh. you know, this is his take. He shared it with me. Um, yeah, and I understand. He, yeah, that was it. I mean, we're free to do what we want. Got nothing to lose, right? Got nothing no, to lose. No. Go just time. We have nothing Fight to lose. Um, the regional thing, it, it's I'll still good. I'm sorry? I wasn't there the last time. Maybe I'm the swing guy. <laughs> I could make it Causing trouble? No, I'm just saying. Okay. I'll come dress nice and I'll... Um, the regional, um, uh, regionalization of the, Pine the Ford Pinellas, they're still going to have 25 seats. And the way it was described to me um, was that uh, there's 15 seats right now and that that 25 seats is going to be split among the uh, three counties, Pasco, Hillsborough, and Pinellas, if that happens but there'll still be 25 seats. And my point is, if we don't fight for a seat now, and let's say we assume we do get a seat, it'd be a lot easier to maybe continue participating in that. Because there, what, what, uh, what Lanton described to me was that there would be a sub panel within that regional council that would be Pinellas, and it would still be representation by cities and things like that. I don't know, all I'm getting at is that we weren't asked about it. We need to share with them what our uh, concerns are. We provided them a letter. Y'all uh, agreed to go ahead and make the reconsideration. And um, I, given where we are, I agree, we're probably not gonna go anywhere, but they're also asking us for a resolution to endorse what they're wanting to do. I, I don't wanna do, I mean, me personally, I'm willing to say I don't wanna give them that resolution. Remember. The last time they asked us for a resolution, we refused. They threatened that they were going to withhold money. Yeah. Remember that? I do remember that. I mean, that's democracy at its finest. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Blanton is. Yes, right. So anyway, I, if you can make it, if you can, if you cannot, you know, I'll be there. Um, I, I don't know that I'm going to um, I understand from the city manager, you're getting some research done and some, you'll have some things to say. I'm not, my, my, comments already in the letter that went to them. I don't really have much more to offer, but I do want to be there to show my face, so yes, sir. I'll be there. Okay. Um, is there, uh, okay, that's my comments. Everybody's had it. Did you say something? Did you have a oh, chance? Okay, no. you said something. All right. Um, Playing with my chief. Yes, that's all I had. Meeting adjourned at 1038. Cool.